they were only down 27-20 going into the uh, halftime, and Penn State was able to get a quick touchdown to go in 34-20 at half, and uh, they never got on track in the second half, similar to the University of Miami's uh, football game against the Huskies last, last week. Rutgers has won the toss. In fact, uh, the coin toss today was made by the uh, governor of the state of New Jersey, and they used a coin, a silver dollar dated uh, 1869, in honor of the 125th anniversary. And so the Canes kicking off to the uh, twin tandem of Terrell Willis, along with Kevin Williams, near their own goal line. On a day that, uh, yes, is a uh, fitting for college football in this neck of the woods. It is Dane Pruitt for Miami who has the ball cocked on the tee at the Canes 35 yard line. And the junior from Birmingham, Alabama is all set to put his toe into it. And just as the game begins, this rain which has been intermittent on this Saturday stops. It abates a bit. It may dry out this afternoon. We are underway. The second meeting ever between Miami and Rutgers. And very dangerous Terrell Willis starts at his own 10. Cuts back to the 20 to 25 and then is taken head on and dropped right there by Corn Francis. First and 10. Or rather that is a Jeffrey Taylor, number 59, rather than 58 in Francis. Taylor makes the solid stick. And here comes the solid offense in scarlet red. Under the direction of Ray Lucas, the junior quarterback from uh, Harrison, New Jersey, who ranks in the top 10 all time offensively in Rutgers history. Passing yardage, close to 3,000 yards. Reggie Funderburk has been his top target, the sophomore wide receiver. Stephen Harper, Marco Battaglia, Two fine receivers as well, but tackling at the tight end. And on first down, he throws to Funderburg. And that's a gain of seven, eight yards uh, in the flat. Miami says it comes up with the football. C.J. Richardson did, but that's not the case. Funderburg was down when he lost the ball. Quick catch out to the flat, Matt. Big gain on first down. Yeah, Rutgers comes out with a uh, three-wide receiver format, uh, formation and uh, had Funderburg uh, in the... And the slot was able to get it to him quick. Uh, I don't think Miami really expected this uh, formation to open the ball game. You see the defensive front will give you the linebackers in the secondary as well. It is second down. We'll call it eight. Rohan Marley and Corin Francis coming off injury starting today on opposite flanks of Ray Lewis. Obviously, a first down carry as Bruce Presley. The thunder combination of thunder and lightning, Terrell Willis being lightning, picks up the first down. Quite a football player there in Bruce Presley. Little draw action with a lead block, a big hold. No one put a hand on him until he was hit by uh, Pearson, Malcolm Pearson on the stop. The senior strong safety. So already at their own 40-yard line on the opening possession of this football game. Back goes Lucas off play action. Steps up in the pocket and fires and it's incomplete. Broken up on the play by Chad Wilson, the cornerback. The pass intended for Funderburg across midfield. Wilson, the fifth-year senior, got his left hand in on the football. Funderburg is open here uh, momentarily, but uh, Ray Lucas is a little late on getting the football there, and Chad Wilson just does a great job of coming in at the last minute and swatting the ball away. Good recovery by Chad Wilson. So the first pass attempt of the afternoon is incomplete. Lucas said, hey, I, I hit you in the chest. You should have made that catch. Bridges, Presley, behind Lucas on second down. He's going airborne a second time. Out of the backfield, and Presley dropped it. Too hot to handle. Too hot to handle, but they had it set up. Uh, the Washington Huskies had great success with the screen pass, and here you see the Rutgers football team coming out early, trying to get a screen to see if Miami has made the corrections. Doug Graber, the former defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, in his fifth season here in New Jersey, and really with this new stadium and the renewed emphasis, it's the first time in a long while that Rutgers has had a chance to compete with Big East caliber teams. Well, Doug Graber's done a great job of uh, assembling a good football team offensively. They're as good as they come, and defensively, which is strange being he was a defensive coordinator, uh, that they're not better defensively. Now Lucas can scramble. He needs to reach midfield for the first. He stepped out of bounds right at the midfield strike. Ever so close to earning the first down. 
but we anticipated today that we would see him scramble around a bit on this natural grass field, and uh, he comes up with a gain very close to 10 yards. That should be the first for Rutgers. Well, he's got the first down, and as you see, he goes back. There's no one open, and he possesses the speed and the ability to, to make something happen on his own, and here you see him coming up with the first down. A big play by Ray Lucas scrambling out of the pocket. Here you see him once again. Here's a good shot at it as he points out who he wants as defender of the block. And you see uh, Funderburg comes back and puts a big hit on Rohan Marley. So the fifth play of this opening possession on a damp afternoon in the New Jersey suburbs of the Big Apple. Rutgers doing exactly what it wants to do, Matt, on its opening possession. That's control the ball. Willis the lone setback, three receivers as you see, but it will be a rather Presley off the left side across midfield into Kane territory. He earns the 47-yard line. Two years ago, the Big East Rookie of the Year. And coming into this one, a man who's rushed for better than 1,500 yards. Combined as a freshman and a sophomore, Presley at 215 pounds is alone. Yeah, here, here you see the good blocking up front, and you know, this is what they've got. They've got the big offensive lineman that uh, will push you back off the ball and give Presley and Willis place to, to run. And uh, the last play, you've seen Presley able to pick up two yards. Good blocking. On second down, quick pass, the pop, Marco Bataglia, the All-American candidate tight end. Makes the grab a yard shy of a first down marker. Recall all the problems Miami had defending the tight end last week against the Huskies, but Taglia is just as good as Washington's Mark Bruner. Well, last week Miami had some problems against Bruner, but they don't expect to change what they were doing. Last week they, they, they had people in the right place. They were doubling him and et cetera, but he was able to get loose and, and execute. And, you know, the, the Hurricane defenders just have to make the play and talking to Coach McMacken, he's not looking to change anything. Pickup of six. The second completion of the afternoon for Loki. Bridges and Presley behind him now. And the give is to Presley. And he hammers inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. The quarterback and sophomore Carlos Jones had to come up to make the stop. First down, Rutgers. Oh, we're looking at a very good offense. They're doing a good job of selecting their plays here. As you see, once again, you've got. Uh, Presley starting up for up front, uh, starting inside and bouncing out, coming up with the first down, and this is just a well-run offensive football team. This offense produced 540 yards against Syracuse, 513 at the base of Mount Nittany last Saturday. It's confident in moving the football. Terrell Willis behind Lucas, Miami blitzing. Rutgers picks it up. Willis kicks outside, turns the corner inside the 35, and he's down to the 33. And a flag flies in very late away from the pile. We may have a personal foul call against the Scarlet Knights. Chad Wilson, the cornerback, the fifth-year senior, came up to make the hit. It is against Red or Rutgers, says John Smith, the referee, and that's very painful, the first mistake today for Graber's troops. Well, this is what this is what Rutgers cannot afford is to make the, the mistakes, especially a, a dumb mistake of this nature where you uh, Willis has gotten a big run, seven, eight yard gain, and you get an unsportsmanlike penalty for uh, hitting the guy in the back after the play is over. After the play, we have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike offense, 15 yard penalty, third down. So the football is moved from the Miami 32 all the way back to the 48 yard a big penalty, Paul. Dennis Erickson looking on. Very intense here yesterday. And his team's walked through. Anything but relaxed. He realized, as did his staff, that he had his hands full today at Rutgers. Well, he, he comes into a, a football team that's playing well. Uh, they, they got beat pretty bad against Penn State, but offensively, they've got it going. And earlier during the year, they played well defensively. And if they can put that defense together today, Miami's in for a dogfight. A freshman, Chris Hutton, to the bottom of your screen in the slot, Stephen Harper. Lucas, under pressure, unloads the tackle. can get but one hand on the football at the Miami 40-yard line. It's incomplete. And now Rutgers faces third and very low. It needs 19 yards to hold on to the football. Well, he had him open. He just missed him. Uh, 
errant thrown ball, but uh, he had him wide open, and Pataglia wasn't able to come up with it. As you see, Ray knows that uh, that was his fault. He had him open, didn't get him the football. Lucas threw for 240 yards last week and a pair of touchdowns against Penn State. It would be a huge situation here if he could pick up the first down. As you see a four-man rush, Miami actually rushing five with the blitz. Lucas unloads deep down the boundary, and it is picked off. Chad Wilson steps in front of Thunderbird, and Miami owns the interception. Chad Wilson just did a great job of running, running with Thunderbird, uh, seeing the ball all the way and just going up, taking it away. Had great position for the interception. So the penalty and the interception and this long opening drive is now turned around by the fired up Miami defense. No score and the game set to get the football when we return to the campus of Rutgers University. Hi everyone, Steve Allen here to tell you about an important breakthrough Anything that lets you hear a whisper up to 70 feet away. Whisper. It's the Whisper XL, an amazing electronic earpiece that lets you hear a pin drop from across the room. The same way binoculars magnify your vision, this tiny device magnifies your hearing. Just slip on the whisper, turn up the volume, and you're ready for super hearing like never before. Don't turn up the TV, turn on the whisper, the Whisper XL. Similar devices sell in catalogs for $200 and more. But if you call now, the Whisper XL can be yours for just $29.95. Think of it, just $29.95 for super powerful hearing. Give us a call and turn up the volume. To order your Whisper XL, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112 or send check or money order for $29.95 plus $5.50 shipping and handling to Department S, P.O. Box 4943, Omaha, Nebraska. For faster service, call 1-800-652-2112. Excuse me, Shetty! In the NFL, there's only one sports drink, and it's got to be Gatorade. The Miami defense coming up with the first turnover today, Nat. Here you see good, good protection, but Miami comes with the little blitz here. And you see Ray Lucas unloading on it, and he just uh, threw it up for grabs. But as you can see, if you look at the top of your screen there, you see Chad Wilson in great position and just goes up and takes the ball away from Thunderbird. Excellent play. His first interception of the season, the fifth of the year for the Canes, and uh, from Rutgers' vantage point, it's almost as good as a punt. You have Miami backed up inside its own 20-yard line as Frank Costa and company touch the football for the first time. True, it's almost as good as a punt as we look at the interception here again, but you know, when you get down there and you got first and 10, and you run the ball down the 32-yard line and you give up a senseless penalty that takes you out of field goal position and really stops your drive, and then you end with an interception. That hurts. Chris T. Jones, Jonathan Harris, Jamie German. All flanked to the near side, to the bottom of your picture. And on first down, here is Stewart jacked up at the line of scrimmage and driven back. And it's the Floridian Keith Bryant, along with Bob Sneathan, number 89, the senior right in, who teamed the former wall in red. Scarlet Knights got great penetration at the, at the snap, and as you can see, just... Sneathan avoids the block of Dabness, and here comes Bryant, and no, that's what they'd like to do all day. Absolutely nothing on first down. German and Trent Jones to the bottom of your screen. Chris T. Jones up top. Second down, Stewart behind Frank Costa. The draw, Stewart. Cuts to his left across the 20, the 25. He's close to the first down. He's got the first down. Miami comes right back with it. They, they've talked about getting the ball in James Stewart's hands, and you know, they come back second play with a draw, and he picks up the 11 yards for first down, and this is what we expect from that hurricane offense today. There's Frank Costa, who needed 40 tickets today to take care of family and friends from Philadelphia, about an hour and a half away. His offensive skill teammates, 
And the front wall, it's Lumeski along with Perry, Simonet, and Jay Ina, strong side guard, and Casey Jones. Number 63 will snap the football as he does here on first down. Stewart looking to turn the corner, and there's nothing there. It is second down. Alcides Catano, the outside linebacker, number 80, the senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, led the charge. Sneven and Bryan already have had a big hit today. Flanked by Swinger and Granera, Swartz Giddings and Catano, who made the stop that time, and the secondary, a senior in tribute, a sophomore in Ward on the corners with Washington and Kelly along the hashes. They call it a loss of one. Second and 11, three men in the pattern. As Costa turns, play action, and moves and rolls, and throws, and it's caught. Gerard Daphnis, the tight end, across the 35, ahead to the 36-yard line. Only his second reception of the season for the sophomore from Miami. This is what happens when you do a good job of establishing a run, showing them that you want to run the football. As you see Daphnis come wide open, dragging across, and uh, Costa pulls up and puts the ball on the money. They'll bring the chains from the far side of the field following the gain of 11 by Costa as number 11 connects for 11 yards on his first pass attempt of the day. That was just a good job of play action. It, it really looked like he was giving the ball to Stewart as he came out and got outside the pocket and was able to pick up Gerard Dampness as he came across. Good execution by the Hurricane offense. Dennis Erickson, who has not dropped back-to-back -back games since 1988 as a head coach when he was at Washington State. He wants this one badly, seeking his 55th victory. Miami, orange and green from the near side hatch on first downs in this scoreless football game. Miami spreading the field and Stewart bounces outside. Stewart 5, 10 and more across midfield. A flag flies as he's pushed into the Rutgers bench. It's first down and a penalty too. And it appears to be Schwartz, the linebacker, who's getting an earful from his coach, the sophomore, who made a late hit. Well, you hate to see this from your linebacker, but, you know, they're all fired up, and they're, they're putting forth that effort. And, you know, when you're going hell-bent for election, it's kind of hard to stop. And as you see, he hits him a little bit late after he's already stepped out of bounds. Really a shot to the ribcage. Graber. 15-yard penalty is assessed at the end of the run. He wants aggression, but here not like see, this. Here you see a better shot that uh, Stewart is clearly out of bounds as uh, Swartz comes in and puts the pop to him, and you know that hurts your ball club. Uh, you know, two big penalties, one on offense, one on defense. So Rutgers held the football for 11 plays before stalling, and then the interception. Miami taking over on its own 16. Here comes the sixth play of its first possession of the afternoon. Down to the 30-yard line. Is Stewart. Gain of about three and a half yards. So Stewart getting a lot of work early in this football game. His fifth carry out of six plays. His fifth carry, but even the Hurricanes went to a little different wrinkle that time. They went to the double tight with two wides and, you know, saying that we're going to run the football and let's see if you can stop us. And you know, that's what you want to see this Hurricane football team be able to do. Run the football when everyone knows they're going to run it. Yateel Green, number 87, the freshman wide receiver, checks the end of the game. Chris T. Jones departs. Jamie German to the bottom of your screen on second down. Straight ahead. Stewart and he's driven back. Rashawn Gettings, the middle linebacker, number 57. With that wet turf, Stewart tried to put on the brakes. Really couldn't and sliding backwards. Gettings hit him up around the chin. Well, you, as you see here, you'll see this abrupt start by Stewart as uh, Rashawn Gettings just put that head here right there on the numbers and drives him backwards. Big play coming up with a hurricane offense. Third and seven. Costa going upstairs. Has time. Spies a receiver. Throws and it's dropped in complete. 
inside the 20-yard line. Trent Jones got his hands on it, but couldn't make the catch. And it is fourth down, and this record crowd gives that Rutgers defense a big hand. This was good execution by both Frank Costa and Trent Jones. But as you see, he reads the defense, slides back inside, but he just doesn't come down with the catch. They did everything right but him holding on to the football. Dane Pruitt's longest career field goal is 48 yards. He kicked it at Boston College a year ago. This is a 47-yarder out of the hole of punter Mike Christen. And we have motion along the line of scrimmage. And that will change this kick considerably. It looks to be going against Miami. Dead ball, false star, offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Defense was able to pull the, the right defensive end or the right offensive end off. Mr. Brown, Freeman Brown, jumped, got a little early, got a little over inches there. So, so Dennis Erickson says, let's pooch it. Let's put it in the corner as Miami makes its first mistake of the day. And we mentioned the fact that the Pruitt's career best is 48 yards. This would have been a 52-yarder. So Chrissy goes from holder now to punter. Reggie Funderburg all alone. Ball stays in play. Funderburg calling for the fair catch. The ball sails over his head. Bounds into the end zone. And we play to a draw for the first eight minutes of this game. Rutgers will take over at its 20-yard line. Right now standing jaw to jaw with the nationally ranked Miami Hurricane. More after this from Coors Light. Reach for Coors Light, the silver bullet. It's the right here now. NASCAR's top drivers tear up the track, pushing for pole position in a Winston qualifying night. Then, NASCAR's rising stars show the top dogs how it's done in the Winston Sportsman 100. Engines start rumbling Wednesday at 7, live on Sunshine. If you think you've seen it all, and you're ready for something new, Pay-Per-View is bringing it home for you. Watch this. When you're looking for TV's top choices, there's always one place you can count on, the Preview Channel. At the touch of a button, you can find out what's on, where to find it, and complete pay-per-view ordering instructions. Set your remote control's favorite button to the Preview Channel. For complete pay-per-view information, tune to the Preview Channel. Before you view, preview. Meet the Johnsons. Bill is a computer programmer. Susan is an executive secretary. But Bill was laid off six months ago and job prospects weren't looking great. The family was having financial trouble. Then Bill heard about Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Central Florida. They spoke with Bill's creditors and worked out a repayment schedule that made everyone happy. Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Central Florida, a nonprofit United Way agency, has helped thousands of people. Let us help you. It's free and confidential. Call today. From Shaq to the dream. The games that took your breath away. The players who made you believe. The NBA's Greatest Games, Mondays at 9 on Sunshine. The Miami staff Xing and Oing right now with its offensive unit. Held the ball for eight plays and unable to convert. The penalty costly there. And Rutgers, who fielded the opening kickoff and owned possession for 11 plays, goes on offense a second time. Lucas throwing on the roll. Has a first down. Diving, Bruce Presley out of the backfield, comes across the 30 and finds the 31. Carlos Jones from the secondary on the corner made the stop, but not before Rutgers picks up another first. Here you say, see Ray Lucas do a good job of faking the run, and with Kenny Holmes in his face, put the ball on the numbers to Presley, who does a good job of running well after catching the football, dragging defenders for an extra two or three yards. Here's another look at it as you see him throwing on the run. Lucas with his third completion of the afternoon. That is his longest 12 yards. And now the draw. Presley shredding tacklers. Running through arms. Ahead across the 35 up to the 37-yard line. Nothing fancy about that. Straight ahead behind his center, John Bleich. The right guard, Chris Kennedy. The right tackle, Robert Barr, who weighs in at 315 pounds. Gain of six, second down, and four. Presley now four carries, 18 yards. In 
inside handoff. Wes Bridges tucks the ball for the first time today. How strange is this? It's the first time this season a fullback has carried the ball for Rutgers. His very first carry of the year for Bridges. Well, that's that's probably why that play looks so strange there. The, the tailback never moved uh, when the Lucas gave the ball to the fullback. A look at Warren Sapp, arguably the finest defensive lineman in all of college football, the Alpen Trophy candidate, 284 pounder. And out of the shotgun possession snap now for Rutgers. Here comes Stephen Harper in motion. Appeared to be some confusion. Lucas scrambles away from trouble. We've seen him scramble once for a first down. He's done it again. The mobile junior picks up the first down. And the Knights still on the football. All of this, if, if this continues, as you can see, you, you got Warren Sapp, for All-American candidate, does a good job of fighting off blockers, keeping his, keeping his vision, and forcing Lucas to run out of bounds there. But if this continues, you, you would have to expect that uh, Greg McMacken will eventually go to some type of spy because Lucas' ability to run with the football if everything breaks down is a big key for the uh, Rutgers football team. Now Lucas today scrambling has picked up 17 yards on two carries. Rohan Marley shows blitz and here he comes. The toss sweep goes the other way. And Stewart earns three tough yards. Kenny Holmes, the sophomore left in, was on his back. It was Patrick Riley on the stop. Holmes and Riley, Sapp and Lang, the front wall against Graver's Scarlet Knights. Marley Lewis, Corin Francis, the linebackers, Jones and Wilson on the corners, Richardson and Pearson in the secondary for a defense that ranks fifth in the nation, surrendering less than 225 yards a game. But they are in a scoreless affair today here on the campus of Rutgers University late in the first quarter. On second down, Lucas throwing up the boundary. His receiver went out of bounds. No flag. And he was looking for Willis out of the backfield and feeling some heat was Lucas from that man in Kenny Holmes. Smart play by Ray Lucas just to throw the ball away. He's outside the pocket. He's got a, he's got Willis going down the sideline who's been knocked out of bounds, and he just unloads the ball to stay away from the sack. Good pressure by Kenny Holmes. The Canes have yet to sack Lucas, although they've come close a couple of times. Three yards shy of midfield. Third down and seven. Lucas again from the gun. Thunderbird to the top of your screen. Hutton and Harper down low. And look at here. Another first down. First down, Scarlet Knight. Lewis on the stop of the tight end. Battaglia as the governor of New Jersey. Looks on. Rutgers is, of course, the uh, State University. Little trickery the there. As you see, they're running the tight end, Battaglia, back on the uh, shovel pass. Excellent play calling by Doug Graber and his staff. Battaglia, the uh, top receiver on the season, had 20 catches coming in, has two today. Big target now to close to 6'4". Outside Willis. Not much. A little spin move. Crowd thought he should have had a face mask call that a cane touched his cage. Kennard Lang didn't come up with the tackle here, Paul, but he needs to be given a lot of credit as Willis tried to spin outside. Kennard Lang stayed at home and forced him back in where Horn Francis was able to come in and come up with the tackle. Ray Lewis in the center of your screen. Here we the top tackler. Here you see we might have got away with one with that right hand. And we got a little late hit there by uh, Malcolm Pearson. The shotgun again on second down. Lucas rolling with time. Fires. That's caught. Harper face mask this time. And a couple of flags fly. Rutgers reached the 32-yard line on their opening possession and then threw the interception after a penalty. This time, Miami commits the flagrant foul, and Rutgers' drive will punch even deeper into Kane territory. Well, here, Carlos, Carlos Jones just makes the mistake of waiting too long. He's in perfect position. He sees the play all the way, and he breaks down instead of going up and hitting him as he's catching the football and comes away with a face mask penalty. 
mistake by Carlos here. They greased the goalposts. Defense. At Rutgers last night. First down. That is how confident they are of an upset today. They didn't want the students to be able to tear down the goalposts after this game. How brash is that? But in a scoreless first quarter against nationally ranked Miami, Rutgers is first and 10 inside the Kane 20-yard line. Lucas asks for quiet. Willis set behind him, gets the football, and is knocked down in the backfield. Will not get out of his own backfield on first down. And Warren Sapp is the man who wrapped him up. Warren Sapp did a good job of coming around the guard in a hurry. Beat him with his quickness. Was able to come around. And this is what makes Warren Sapp such a great player. You see him coming around. They're not able to get any hands on him. And he's able to make the tackle in the backfield. As Kennard Lane comes in and cleans up. A loss of two on the play, if not three. Second and long. Wide left. Lucas looks their way. Steps up. Flag goes down. He throws into the end zone incomplete. Harper had position on the defensive back. Let's see what the penalty is about. Back up field. Holding against Rutgers. Well, Ray Lucas had uh, Harper open in the end zone and it was a good pass and, and one that was a catchable ball, but uh, it would have been called back anyway, so it's not as big a mistake by Harper not coming up with the catch. Unsportsmanlike conduct the first time Nat was charged to uh, Rutgers. Their opening drive deep into Kane territory. Now they commit the hold, and this ball will be marked outside the 35 at the 38. You know, Miami comes with a little blitz here. You see Juan Russell coming, and Patrick Riley all over Lucas as he lets the ball go, and you know, they come up with another holding penalty once you get down in the green zone. It's just unspeakable. That's the, that's what kill coaches, you know, the mistakes when you've got a chance to put points on the board that takes you out of uh, field goal range or scoring range. Second down, and look at this. Second down and 30. At the King 37-yard line, Thunderbird in motion to the near side left. Lucas keeps it on the ground. Willis juking tacklers inside the 35 to the 32. Ray Lewis, fine inside linebacker, made the stop. So Lewis with the 22 tackles against Washington, 15 against Arizona State. A man who week in and week out turns in double-digit performances in on the play here. And it's third down approaching for a Rutgers team that in this first quarter is four for four, Nat, converting on third down. Bruce Presley in the backfield with his quarterback. The screen, the Thunderbird. Thunderbird inside the 25, not a bad call. Close to field goal range down to the 22-yard line. Good safe pass that... Uh chance of an interception and gives them a chance to get into field goal range and so as we take another look at it from the end zone here you see them doing a good job of setting up the flanker screen and Ray Lewis stays at home but a better job of tackling than they did last week against the Washington Huskies. Eddie DeBorg is on to attempt what will be a 39 yard try his career best 37 earlier this year against West Virginia. From 39, angle to his right. Good snap and spotted has the distance. He splits the upright. A career high for DeBorg has Rutgers on a high. They lead heavily favored Miami <laughs> here in the first quarter. Off the toe of Eddie DeBorg. Elvira here, finding great horror movies for the Coors Light Click or Treat Giveaway. Coors! Huh? We're giving away 50,000 videos, like the giant Gila monster, the wasp woman, or the brain that wouldn't die. Don't just stand there. Look for me this Halloween in a shocking display of specially marked Coors packages with film clips inside to tell you if you want. The Coors Light Click or Treat Giveaway. It'll be a scream. <laughs> Grab your skates, bikes, and running shoes and get ready for the Gatorade Family Fitness Weekend. Participate in running, inline skating, or sprint triathlons for kids and adults. 
The Great Apaco Triathlon is coming to Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas October 29th. Make plans now to be a part of this exciting weekend. For entry information, call Exclusive Sports Marketing today at 407-241-3801. Time for the Great Play of the Week, brought to you by GMAC Financial Services, the Expressway Home. It's early second quarter, SMU versus UCLA, when quarterback Ramon Flanagan shovels this pass to Jacques Smith. Smith finds a hole and shakes it loose for a 62-yard scamper before he's brought down. It's first and goal Mustangs on the UCLA four-yard line. This Great Play of the Week has been brought to you by GMAC Financial Services, the Expressway Home. so fired up they've torn down the railing Rutgers leading three to nothing let's check in with Joe Rose down on the sideline Paul coach Erickson talked before the game how important it was to take this Rutgers crowd out early he told his team in the first quarter we have to score quickly it hasn't happened and this crowd is really into the ball game this is exactly what they were afraid of Rutgers now believe they can win this football game all right Joe DeBorg with some confidence and a uh, haircut <laughs> for all time. I'd like the RU special, please. That's the kind of haircut you need, Paul. Yeah, I'd look pretty good with that. You'd be big on campus. You see the drive that began following the uh, punt by Miami. Both teams have been touched by critical penalties early in this game. And Rutgers now off the toe of the board has the early lead. What Rutgers did after getting the penalty that set them back uh, second and 30, they took two plays to get in field goal range. They didn't worry about trying to get the first down, trying to get in the end zone. They took two low risk plays that got them in field goal range so they could get on the board early by giving their field goal kicker a chance to put some points on the board. Some brave souls without their sweaters today. It's close to 50 degrees, and that is what happened. You have to be so careful with your enthusiasm and the like that someone is not seriously injured. Big pile up there, though. Joe Kukowski, number 46, handles the kickoff chores uh, for the Knights. And he boots this one deep. And it will be Al Shipman from the five-yard line for Miami to bring it back. Out to the 20, ahead to the 22, and swarmed under there. Ryan Sheridan for Rutgers made the stop. So Frank Costa takes over for the second time today. He completed but one pass on Miami's opening possession when the Canes held onto the football for eight plays in about five minutes of a first quarter clock that has only 68 seconds remaining in it. Down a field goal. German to the far side. Jonathan Harris, Chris T. Jones to the bottom of your screen. The draw on first down. James Stewart breaks a tackle across the 25. Ahead to the 30, 31-yard line for James Stewart. Alcides Catano, the linebacker, in on the stop. Coming into this game, Stewart needed but 126 yards to reach 1,000 for his career. And Rutgers, as you see, believing it's going to win the game. We mentioned this a moment ago, Nat. They were out greasing down the goalposts. That's confidence uh, when you when you, <laughs> you start to grease down the goalpost in anticipation of a victory to keep the fans from tearing it down. That says a lot. Sherman falls down. Costa has to keep it. Costa has the first down. Heady play by Frank Costa. Good a running back, Stewart, slipped, and he improvised, turned it into a first down. Yeah, that's just a good, smart play by Frank Costa, seeing Stewart had slipped and just getting as much as he can and getting out of bounds without taking a hit. First down for the Hurricanes, trailing. Three to nothing. Dennis Erickson today looks to hand Miami what would be its third victory of the season and climb back into the top ten. His Canes ranked 12th in the nation in the coaches' poll. Very unfamiliar territory for tradition rich and nationally championship proud Miami. Costa right down the boundary. Tough catch made right down the hash marks. That is a completion to Saeed Tucker, the tight end. Tucker takes the hit. 
earns the first down. Thomas Kelly, the free safety, gave him a shot. But Tucker held on to the football. As we see the replay here, you see Saeed Tucker, great concentration as he goes up between the defenders, knowing he's going to get hit, holding on to the football. Good grab by Saeed Tucker. A gain of a dozen for Tucker on this, his third reception of the season. A big Oklahoma native, tall target, six feet, six inches tall, and he leaps into the air. Tough to miss him, isn't it? Yeah, he's got great leaping ability, and uh, you know the thing that I like about this Hurricane receiver core is they will catch the ball in their hands, and Saeed Tucker is one of those tight ends that has the ability to make big plays, and that's what they need, big plays from this offense. The referee and James Brown over to talk to members of the security staff at the far end of the field. See where the fence fell down. Apparently, Miami may be complaining that it could not see the 25-second play clock with all the workers trying to reconstruct the railing. Well, that, that could be a problem, but uh, right, not right now. Rutgers, Rutgers might have that, that problem, but uh, the Hurricanes are going the opposite direction, and they should have no problem with it. Miami, four yards shy of midfield, and a three-point yard, three point shy of Rutgers on the scoreboard as the uh, first quarter draws to an end. This ball may not be snapped before the gun sounds. In fact, that's it. The first quarter is history, and in this, the 125th anniversary game, the first 15 minutes of this contest belong to the Scarlet Knights. Our second quarter set to unfold when we return on the banks of Rutgers after this commercial message. If you'd like to lose weight once and for all, here's good news. I'm Ann Fletcher. As a professional nutritionist, I've studied hundreds of people who have lost weight and kept it off for 5, 10, 20 years and more. Their inspirational, real-life stories are all in my new book, Thin for Life. Learn the 10 keys to mastering your own weight, the hard-earned secrets of people who are living proof that you can lose weight for good. Thin for Life can help you stay thin permanently without pills or potions, without becoming an exercise fanatic, or giving up good, satisfying food. If you've tried and tried to lose weight only to gain it back, Thin for Life can change your life once and for all. Order Thin for Life at the direct from publisher price of just $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-652-1212. Order now and receive this simply healthful cookbook full of delicious low-fat recipes absolutely free. Call now, 1-800-652-1212. It's a test of nerves, a play for perfection. The right combination can make you number one. Game, set, match. The ball, deceptive in flight, destructive with speed, out of control. It will crush you. Master, it will make you number one. Prime tennis. Game, set, match. On Sunshine. Spin time again, and Don Shula is ready to take Miami into the highlight zone. So get ready, because Sunshine Network is going to take you along for the ride. I'm Carrie Ross. Join us next week when we take a look at that much anticipated Shula versus Shula, David versus Don. We'll also look ahead to the Bills. All the best plays from the huddle to the hits, the game within the game, brought to you live each week. The Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine, 7 p.m. on Sunshine. Our second quarter unfolds with Joe Rose on the sidelines. Nat Moore up here in the booth. I'm Paul Kennedy and Frank Costas going upstairs. He has time. Falls and it's picked off. Intercepted by Mark Washington of Rutgers. Across midfield and back into Miami territory. Washington picking off Costa. This was just an errant throw by Frank Costa trying to force the ball in to Christy Jones. They had a zone defense surrounded him, and Washington just did a good job of reacting and breaking on the football. Well, you had Washington beating Miami last week. Here you have Mark Washington beating him on that play. Miami shut out in a first quarter for the first time this season, and this its first Big East game of the year. And Lucas is going upstairs, chased out of the pocket, he throws it to the sideline and just throws it away. Miami was coming. 
and it was Pat Riley who knocked him down. As we take a look at our first quarter numbers presented by Gatorade, Mr. Moore. Well, if you've got uh, the Hurricanes are down to Rutgers in first downs, uh, four to seven. Passing yardage, uh, Rutgers is ahead. To, you know, Rutgers is basically controlling this game with uh, nine minutes and 24 seconds of possession, and that's what they want to do. They want to keep that high-powered uh, uh, Canes offense on the sideline. Miami had won 12 consecutive games against Big East opponents since the league was formed in 1991, but it dropped its last Big East game, you recall, the season finale last year to West Virginia. Here comes Bruce Presley. Maybe a yard. Tough running there. Corin Francis, who today gets the start. He missed the Washington game, had the knee problem. He's back in there, and he makes the play. Does a good job of just sifting through the hole and stopping Bruce Presley before he gets started upfield. Rutgers has been successful early today, converting on third down. Facing the likes of Kenny Holmes, Riley, Sapp, Lang, and the like. One of the top defenses in America. Let's see what they do on third nine. Lucas rolling against the gray. Unloading, he has Harper. And Harper is brought down shy of the first down at the 42. Stephen Harper, the redshirt freshman, made the catch, but has run out of bounds. And the punting unit is going to come on for Rutgers. Carlos Jones, who's been active today from the secondary, is the man who ran him into the sideline. And Jamie German should get a chance to field this punt by Jared Sloven. Sloven averages about 38 yards per kick. Wants to hang this one high. Right up the shoe. German calls for and makes the fair catch at his 13-yard line. Nice punt by Sloven. Miami has the football, but it's back inside its own 15-yard line. A pause in the action, and we'll return as well in a moment. When tracking college football, keep your eye on the Hurricanes. The experts agree. Thompson newspapers say they're loaded with talent. Stephen Smith calls them a title contender. Miami should reassert its superiority this year. Hurricanes and Sunshine on track for another winning season. It's time to jam. Can you dig it? to jam with college football all season on sunshine can you dig it nascar's top drivers tear up the track pushing for pole position in a winston qualifying night then nascar's rising stars show the top dogs how it's done in the winston sportsman 100 engines start rumbling wednesday at seven live on sunshine for people with epilepsy things have changed they're reaching new heights traveling new roads swinging for the fences but some still need more help the epilepsy foundation of america is here to help let's not leave anybody out of life on a damp chilly saturday afternoon uh, on the campus of rutgers sunshine network welcomes you aboard the difference in this football game the 39-yard field goal by eddie DeBoer. the numbers on lucas and costa thus far into this game nearly identical touchdowns and interceptions costa who hands it here to stewart bouncing outside stewart fighting across the 20 out to the 21 good run catano the linebacker thomas kelly the free safety made the stop costa has completed that only two passes in better than a quarter of football stewart on the other hand has carried the ball eight times today oh miami came into the ball game not wanting to throw the football much and it's very evident with how many times stewart has carried the football as long as stewart can run the football miami has a chance of being successful if they have to throw it all day you can expect the Rutgers defense to come after it. Stewart with 45 yards rushing thus far. Second and short for Costa. 
Stewart to the right side. Stewart hit hard at the 25, but that's good enough for the first down. Catano, the linebacker from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Made 16 solo tackles on the air and had a solo stop there. And you see Stewart credited with 107 yards rushing against Rutgers in the Miami win of a season ago. That was a game Frank Costa did not start. He was benched. It was Ryan Collins who got the start after the Canes had been upended by Florida State. Today, despite the Washington setback, Costa is back in there, and Stewart's rammed right back into the middle. Rashad Swinger, the left defensive tackle, the sophomore. Number 99 in the program made the tackle. What we're seeing here, as you see Stewart coming up in the middle, is that Miami is committed to running the football today, and you know they're going to give Stewart every shot there is to, to have a big day. And you know, if they keep giving it to him in the fourth quarter, this will pay off as they start to wear down that defensive line of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Jeremy German along with Lamont Kane, wide left. Play action. Costa, here comes the heat. Down he goes. Sacked for the first time. And it's the top sack man for Rutgers. And Bob Steven with his 13th career quarterback sack. He is their top pass rusher, and here's why. Well, and here you see him at the top of the screen as he beats the block of the tight end, and then he out quicks Perry to get in on the sack. He's just using his quickness, a good arm over technique, and you see the defensive end from the other side, Gunnar, as he's coming in as well. That's a loss of seven on the play, and the crowd is into it now. 17 for Frank Costa. Three receivers to the left. A pair to the right. Five in the pattern. Costa being chased. Costa fires upfield. Christy Jones. First down. Midfield. Jones may go the distance. Count them off. 10, 5, touchdown Hurricanes. Great execution. Good job by Frank Costa of picking out his star receiver, his favorite receiver, Christy Jones, as he crosses the middle on a square end and then great blocking downfield by the other receivers to get him into the end zone. Fantastic execution. As we look at the ISO, here's Christy Jones running a good square end. As you see, Jamie German clearing out. There's a big hole in the middle of the field, and now watch the run after the catch. There's just no way you go catch this guy with the great speed of that Miami receiver core. There you see Jamie German coming back and peeling off, making a good block to get him into the end zone. Number 85 on a touchdown play. It covers 82 yards. The extra point is good. We'll also have a roughing the kicker. Dane Pruitt was flattened after he booted it through. So Costa quiets this crowd, and I bet you a number of critics back home. As on third down, 82 yards. The distance Costa to Chris T. Jones, and it's Miami's longest pass play of the season. Well, Miami's had tremendous success all year. They're all with uh, completion of 50 yards or more and at least every ball game and here you see Frank Costas to Chris T. Jones 85 yard touchdown and this record crowd of more than 40,000 has gone stonely quiet running into the kicker defense the penalty will be assessed on a kickoff touchdown and each of its first three games, Costa and company had produced touchdowns of 50 yards or longer. They do it for the fourth straight game today, and it's a big one. Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, Mr. Barkley wanted to say that uh, he and his friends will play a uh, lousy round of golf for a fine cause in the uh, Charles Barkley Celebrity Golf Invitational. It's Monday at 8 on Sunshine. Uh, thank you. If your teeth are yellow or stained, it's nothing to smile about. 
but this is. This is Dental White, the professional non-abrasive tooth whitening process used by dentists across the country to whiten their patients' teeth. Jeanette used Dental White on her upper teeth only. Now just look at these dramatic results. My boyfriend, he loves my new smile. I was amazed at how simple and easy it was to use. My teeth were whiter after the first time I used it. Dental White penetrates into the pores of your teeth to lift out grime. Simply apply the Dental White formula to the custom tray and fit it to your teeth and then wear the tray for 30 minutes. Dental White will whiten your teeth and make them more brilliant than ever. Call now and you'll get a double-sized bottle of Dental White, two sets of custom trays, and easy-to-follow instructions, all for just $19.95. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Dental White, Department S, P.O. Box 4943, Omaha, Nebraska, 68104. NASCAR's top drivers tear up the track, pushing for pole position in a Winston qualifying night. Then, NASCAR's rising stars show the top dogs how it's done in the Winston Sportsman 100. Engines start rumbling Wednesday at 7, live on Sunshine. This is Prime's World. We play all day, every day. the cuts. After this message, Prime plays on. Blindfolded Dan is trying to guess what car we got here, which for you folks watching at home is the uh, Eagle Town. This is dual airbags. These are leather trim seats. I feel a CD player. 300 ZX. Oh! Oh, keep trying, Dan. Dan is trying to identify this new sports coupe. Toyota Supra. From Chrysler's newest brand. Forget Supra. I feel a Lexus SC 300. It's Thank Eagle you. Talon, Dan. Right. Okay, just give me a little Test hint. Test drive a Talon at your Jeep and Eagle dealer or call us. 6.50 to go in the period, and here is New Mars on a breakaway. Moving in. Spins back and hits. Oh, my. Ahead to A.B. He's got Jack Coleman. to your eyes. Joe Rose, Nat Moore, yours truly, Paul Kennedy. Today on the campus of Rutgers University, John Wu, our producer-director, delighted to be bringing you this, the 125th anniversary game, as recognized by the College Football Foundation's Hall of Fame, in honor of Princeton and Rutgers playing in 1869. You see the situation facing the Kings. German and Chris T. Jones, the two wide receivers. The snap by the center in KC Jones, trying to catch Rutgers across the line of scrimmage. I don't think he did. His quarterback, Costa, dropped the ball, had to pick it up, falls forward for a yard at second down. That'll bring a frown to the face of a head coach, won't it? Yeah, that... <laughs> You know, always want to try and catch the defense offside, but if your your quarterback's not ready, you can have a play where you drop the ball and the officials don't call it. You can end up with uh, first down going the other way if Rutgers recovers. German Very dangerous replaced, play. Uh, pardon me, Nat, by the senior A.C. Tellison. Top of your screen. Inside handoff to the workhorse in Stewart. The junior, James Stewart, coming close to 1,000 career yards, carries for, look at this, the uh, 11th time in the first half alone. Well, I think they made an adjustment. I think Larry Jones is now in the ball game, giving Stewart a break. You're and, right. Uh, you know, he's another one of those great backs. They've got four real good backs that uh, every team in the country would love to have. Jones, number 23, the senior from Gainesville. Carries here for the first time today. 
gain of four. So it's not Stewart. Rather Jones. Second down. Jones wants to be sure he had the count right. He's going to carry the football. And into the sea of red. Behind Ricky Perry. The strong side tackle. Zeb Lomelski over there. Two. It's time to punt. Now the crowd begins to stir again as here comes Mike Chrissy. The kick to Reggie Funderburg, the sophomore from Hyattsville. A 10-man rush for Rutgers. A flag down, and the uh, kick will be brought back. The play whistled dead before the snap. It's just been one of those halves. Today. Well, Rutgers is doing a good job uh, before the snap of the football on punts of just jumping that offensive line where they're reacting to the fake seeking team of the defense. They've got to sit in there patiently and wait for the ball to be snapped. Miami has not suffered a blocked punt in three plus games this year, but they will be coming, will the Scarlet Knights, after junior Mike Christian. Chrissy today, one punt of 35 yards out of his own end zone. He gets it away. This is Funderburg, who lets it bound, and it rolls to the 44-yard line, but Rutgers will take over inside Miami territory, despite a solid punt by Chrissy. Dennis Erickson trying to get his troops fired. Their lead precarious, 7-3 to three at Rutgers. I'm Kyle Petty. Hey, with Kendall Oil, you don't need a race car to win. To enter Kendall's fall sweepstakes, you could drive off in this loaded Pontiac Grand Prix or win a Kendall racing jacket or cap. And that's not all. You can get double mail-in rebates on Kendall's Superb 100 and GT1. That's up to 8 bucks off two cases of Kendall. Heck, with a sweepstakes and double rebate, you can drive the speed limit and still win. Kendall Motor Oil. Hey, man, buy it at these locations. When I played basketball, I always wanted the ball. And I got it where it should go. And I always drink Gatorade, because nothing's better. Now I'm playing baseball. I still drink Gatorade. I still want the ball. I still know where it should go. And sooner or later, I'm going to get it there. I hope. <laughs> it's got to be Gatorade. Hi, I'm Dennis Erickson of the University of Miami. I'm Norm Tripp from Alamo Renicar. Join us for a day of golf at Arvidas Weston Hills Golf and Country Club in the second annual Alamo Golf Classic. Alamo Renicar is committed to educational endeavors in South Florida and is proud to sponsor this event. And all benefits go to the University of Miami Athletic Scholarship Fund. We'll tee off at 12.30 on Monday, January 23rd. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you there. there. Looking for a few scares this October? Well, check out Sunshine's October lineup. The Lightning and Panthers pull out their blades and carve up the ice. Chilling. The Hurricanes and Seminoles won't have trouble scaring up some points or hits. And the magic and heat will give you a trick and a treat. Yikes! Still looking for some chills? Well, tune in to Sunshine this October. see the flag. Ames Brown, we may have a hold there. Holding offense. The fifth penalty today to be stepped off against Rutgers, and that stings. Every 
time they get this hold, it, it's after Terrell Willis has had a big run. As you can see, as Terrell heads out to his left, he's got Teron Russell one-on-one, -on -one, and he just uses that speed. He picks up seven, eight yards and before he's knocked out of bounds by Malcolm Pearson, but all for not, then you've got a holding penalty once again. So Doug Graber, who's put four and a half heartfelt years into rebuilding this Rutgers program, how big a win would this be today in this brand new stadium against Miami? Lucas, great job of play faking, but everybody's covered. So he dumps it to Bataglia, the tight end. Bataglia back across midfield and down to the cane. 47-yard line. Lucas. Juan Russell, Pataglia. one of a number of uh, white jerseys, right. surround and drop Pataglia. Ray Lucas does a great job of uh, play action here, hiding the football, but let's give that Hurricane secondary a lot of credit. No one comes open, so Lucas has to drop it off to Pataglia, who does a good job of running with the football after the catch. Still second and 13, though, for Lucas, who today has connected 10 times and now 18 attempts. That was his 10th completion for 76 yards. Willis with daylight. Willis inside the 40. Willis down to the 37-yard line. That Washington uh, net, sorry, uh, a week ago had some success with screens and draws and the like, and Rutgers affected at that too this week. Well, they just, they're just doing a good job, that offensive line of Blight, Williams, and Kennedy of coming off the ball up the center and moving guys out of there. Warren Sapp was out of the ball game, and you see him running against uh, Dwayne Johnson and Patrick Riley and just opening up gaping holes for the back to run through. And senior Kareem Williams, number 50, the guard, did a nice job of creating a hole and sealing off the linebacker, Lewis. Thunderbird moves in motion to the bottom of your screen. Lucas pumps once, scrambles, won't earn the first down as he dives just outside the 35 to the 36. And now, what do you do? It's got to be four down territory, I would think. On fourth down. You know, this is a point where they've got the football in good field position. They'd like to come out of here with some, but I think Coach Graber's made up his mind. He's going to go for it. And that crowd, which would have been quieted by the Costa to Chris T. Jones touchdown strike that gave Miami the lead, now stirs as fullback Tom Wright re-enters the game to provide some muscle in the backfield. A couple of tight ends as well. Miami is going to take a timeout to set itself defensively. Coordinator Greg McMacken, head coach Dennis Erickson, use Miami's first timeout with four minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. You know, taking a timeout here, Paul, just give the defensive coordinator a little chance to think about what does Rutgers like to run in situations of this magnitude. There's a big play. It's fourth and one. You've got them down where if you take the ball away, you've got a good chance of going in at halftime up seven to three or more but uh, you've got to come with your best defense and, and figure out what they'd like to do in certain situations especially this situation and if you're Rutgers you have a chance to lead Miami a team favored by close to three touchdowns here at intermission on a day in which you're honoring 50 former captains and the governor is looking on and what may be a great day for your program and I will say this win lose or draw for the second straight week Rutgers has done an excellent job of hanging with a more powerful foe through the first two quarters of a football game well Doug Graber has to be very happy with his football team at this point they've given up one big play and other than that they've played great football they've been able to control the football they've been able to play nose to nose with the hurricane football team the entire defensive unit went over to the sideline they have their marching order here comes Rutgers. Twin receivers in Harper and Funderburk in tandem to the far side. A flag is down. Movement prior to the snap. The ball was loose. This is fourth down as the play stand. Looked like Ray Lucas pulled out a little early there. And if that's the case, this is going to put them in fourth and six, and they will do better putting the football, I think. Lucas is right in the middle of that huddle and disagreeing, as you can see, with the officiating crew. Miami.
Tommy applauding. That Graber looking on. Dead ball. Full start. Offense. Now you got to punt it away. No choice. As you can see, as we look at the instant replay, Lucas starts to pull out, and the ball never comes up from the center. Everybody moved but center John Bleich. And the penalties that Rutgers has suffered today, most of them have been drive killers. They've come at the worst possible time. Sloven to punt, angling it for the sideline. It's off the side of his foot, bounds inside the 20, stays in bounds, though. All right, how'd it do that? It bounded back toward the field, inside the 15, whistled dead at the 14-yard line. But wait, there is another flag down. Still another flag. Rutgers has been whistled six times, Miami four times in the first half. Holy receiving team. Well, we've been through this once. When he says receiving team, that is after the exchange of possession. So Miami will start even deeper back toward its own goal line with less than four minutes remaining. It is a post-possession infraction. Or is it free possession? Free possession means Rutgers owns the football. Post-possession means it's Miami's ball. And the way they're stepping it off, it's first and ten Rutgers. The 10-yard penalty is assessed from the previous spot. It will give them a first down. Big penalty there. They're deep into the rule book today in the first half. Let's take a good look at uh, Kennard Lang here as he throws down the scarlet defender prior to the kick of the football. On first down, fumble! Miami owns the football. Warren Sapp picks it up. Warren Sapp back across midfield. The Scarlet Knights have turned it over, and now flags fly as Pataglia shoves a Miami Hurricane. He shoved Malcolm Pearson after the play was whistled in. Here you see Willis never really gets the football. It comes off his pads, and Warren Sapp, ever in the backfield, sees it, picks it up, and he shows you his fullback and tight end ability as he runs with the football. And to compound the error, Pataglia comes in and hits Malcolm Pearson. After the, personal after foul, the play. Late hit, Rutgers. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the play, first down. It is penalty marred now. And Battaglia, the All-American candidate, walked over and shoved Malcolm Pearson of Miami after the play was over. You may see it here following the tackle. As you look at Warren Sapp, you know, he's like a big fullback just running as Ray Lucas brings him down. There's there. Well, we don't get a look at it there. I thought we'd get a look at Patagonia coming in, hitting Pearson there at the end. No, it happened after that. And this play could very well turn the whole game around. Warren Sapp, after the bad handoff to Willis, rumbles into Rutgers territory, and then frustrated, the Scarlet Knights commit the major penalty. Costa having to Stewart, who lowers his head and is dropped in his tracks. There was no room on the right side. Rutgers is doing a good job of cheating the linebackers up and the safety washing him up into the gap so that there's no running room and Bill Mimes might have to throw the football a little bit more just to open it up. Three and a half minutes to go as Washington all fired up. He has an interception today. Jammy German to the bottom of your screen. Trent Jones up top along with Chris T. Jones. Keeping up with the Joneses, Chris T. Caught out of bounds, first down. Trent and Chris T. working the right side, and Costa is right on the money. You couldn't have thrown that ball any better than that. That was just a great timing play by Costa to Jones, and you can tell they've worked together quite a bit because this ball is in the air before Chris Jones comes out of his break. Good throw and catch. The net gain is up 17 yards. Do you see pressure as Costa has to release the ball early, but he knows where Christy Jones is going to make his break. A triple set to the near side. Al Shipman closest to the tackle on this side, and Zemelski. And it is Stewart. Rumbling toward the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. James Stewart powers in. As Miami scores, two snaps following the turnover. A pivotal play has propelled Miami to a 13-3 lead. Good blocking by Alan Simonetti.
as he takes the tackle down. And then as you see, the power of James Stewart as he rambles into the end zone. His sixth touchdown of the year, the second of the afternoon for the Canes. And we have an unsportsmanlike call. Flags down, and I believe it's going to be against. It's going to be against the Hurricanes for celebration. celebration against Miami. They're talking to Rutgers. It could have been Stewart because he was celebrating. Unsportsmanlike scoring team. The offended team has accepted the penalty at the suing kickoff. The touchdown stands. Well, Stewart, the good news is he scores. The bad news is it comes with a penalty attached to it. Dane Pruitt on to attempt to the second extra point of the first half with three minutes remaining. In the first two quarters of play, the snap, the spot, and the kick is away. And it is a 14-3 contest. Rutgers scored first, but Miami has struck for a pair of touchdowns. Costa to Chris T. Jones, and Costa to Jones a second time, setting up James Stewart for the touchdown rumble into the end zone of 14 yards. How big was that fumble recovery by Warren Sapp? Well, that was a gigantic turnaround. If, if Rutgers gives University of Miami, does not accept the penalty, University of Miami has the football on the five-yard line, six-yard line. Instead, they take the football, fumble it, and Miami has the ball on the next play on their own 48-yard line, I think it was. Big turnaround. Just three plays officially, 31 yards to get into the end zone. Forgot one of Stewart's runs. Took him less than a minute for the Hurricanes to convert. And James Stewart moves close to 100 yards on this afternoon and 1,000 in a star-filled career. And he's only one touchdown short now of Dunyo Bennett's leading uh, touchdowns for last year, which was seven. So he's got his sixth touchdown and uh, got a long season ahead of him. And look where Dane Pruitt has to kick off from. You know, Paul, this is something that I really think is unfair. I think the NCAA need to really go back and take a look at the rules on, you know, these young kids come out and they play. They play for the fun of the game, the excitement of the game, and, you know, it's hard to tell them not to be happy, not to celebrate when they score a touchdown. There's a thing called excessive celebration, but you should be allowed to, to celebrate and show that you are enjoying the game. Pruitt kicks it along the ground. Wes Bridges scoops it up, comes close to midfield. There's more shoving away from the football. Rutgers with seven penalties in the first half. Miami with six, 13 in all. Shipman got into a push and shoving contest there. Less than a yard shy of midfield. Rutgers still has plenty of time for Rutgers to do something offensively. Oh, excuse me, but Rutgers has played a pretty good football game except for losing their composure and a couple of silly penalties that have stopped themselves. Harper and Thunderbird in the pattern. Lucas rolls right, pumps, comes to midfield and is belted out of bounds. Wants a roughing call or a personal foul call, but Kenny Holmes had wrapped him up long before he went into the sideline. There's no flag to be thrown there. All in the spirit of the game. Although Doug Graber has doffed his hat and doesn't believe so. Well, they're trying to get the call there. As Kenny Holmes does a good job of, you know, staying staying outside. He wheels back, but he gets right back outside, realizing Lucas's running ability. And what you have is Rohan Marley coming in right there at the end. time. Uh, the officials may be just tired of throwing flags. So many. <laughs> it's, it's been a long day for the officials. Harper to the far side. Thunderbird wide as well. In the middle screen. This is Presley. Presley first down. 35-30. And to the 28-yard line. C.J. Richardson flying up from the secondary. On the tackle for Miami as Presley benefited from a fine block a good job of setting up this uh, little screen here. And once again, Miami does not read it. They're 
there's no one there. He's got 10 yards before the, there's even a defender, but they're able to stop him from getting into the end zone. The gain on the play is up 21 yards in what is officially the 11th completion of the first half for Ray Lucas. Working on a big day today is Lucas. Out of the shotgun, on first down, and down he goes. Sacked for the first time at the 32-yard line. Kennard Lang wraps him up, and Lucas is not getting up. Shaken up on the play. Could have landed on that shoulder that he had uh, surgery on the, this offseason. Hopefully he's not injured too badly. Uh, you hate to see a young kid get hurt. But you see, Warren Sapp does a good job of fighting, staying at home, and reacting to the quarterback as he scrambles up the, the outside hole as we look at it once again. Here we see Ray Lucas. You get a good picture of what he sees. There's nobody open as he starts to run upfield. You got Kennard Lang and... Warren Sapp falling on top of him. That's a lot of weight falling on that bad shoulder. Yeah, sandwiched between a 260 pounder in Lang and close to 290 in the aggressive Sapp. And Robert Higgins, the junior college transfer from Brooklyn, New York, will have to enter the game. As Lucas, as you see, being attended to by the medical staff is obviously in pain. It comes with two minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first half. And Miami on top, 14 to three. And this for the Hurricanes, their very first Big East game of the season. It look like he's uh, getting up. He's feeling a little bit better. They've got him uh, where he's able to set up now. And hopefully he just got the wind knocked out of him. And, uh, you know, you hate to see uh, a kid playing so well get knocked out of the ball game, and you know that's an injury that uh, the Rutgers football team cannot afford. And Lucas, with his scrambling ability, shy of the sack, had run for 32 yards, just scrambling about to pick up about three first downs, and also thrown for close to 100 yards on 11 completions. And now, due to injury, as he's helped up to his feet, hopefully he'll be all right. And able to return, he'll leave the number seven, Robert Higgins, will charge into the fray and face one of the more violent defenses in college football. He's trying to stretch that right shoulder. Oh, it's his fell on. I think he landed on his throwing arm, and you know if he's able to. I expect to see him go over the throw throw a few balls to see if he can still throw the football and if he's okay he'll be right back in there. Well what a critical situation Robert Higgins finds himself in now. He has only attempted five passes this year. He's three out of five for less than 40 yards. That's all the playing time he's had. Former Nassau Community College quarterback. Junior college transfer. Scrambling about and belted down right at the line of scrimmage. And right into that Kane sideline and Miami is all pumped up. Warren Sapp having the game of the year for him. What a big day this is for 76. Warren Sapp is just a big, strong man with great quickness. And look at the speed as he outruns Higgins. And then you got Rohan Marley coming in, putting a hat on Higgins at the end of the, at the, end of the play. He's made close to 10 tackles in this first half alone, has Warren Sapp. Third down and 12 now at the Miami 31. Funderburk in motion to the far side. Both Hutton and Harper to the near side right. Everybody out in the pattern. Full flanker screen, Funderburk. Funderburk back to the middle and upended at the 27. Seven yards shy of the first down. There was quite a collision. Right at the 27-yard line, and uh, Rutgers has called timeout. Rutgers burns the second of three with 63 seconds to go. Well, they've got a choice. They can either go for it and try and pick up the first down and go in, or you know, they could go ahead and try and add three points here, and you know, it's a good time to stop the clock and think about it. I'll tell you
you what's interesting, Paul, is as we look at the Rutgers football team, they're, they're throwing several different screens at this Hurricane football team, taking advantage of their rushing ability, how they like to get to the quarterback with the zone defense where everybody's dropping deep and giving guys plenty of room to run. As you see, they came back with a flanker screen. They've shown the fullback screen, tailback screen. I tell you, until Miami stops them, and they're going to keep screening. That's a good call against a very aggressive defense. Well, on fourth down, Eddie DeBorg is going to come on and attempt what would be his second field goal of the afternoon. He opened our scoring today against Miami with what was a career-best 39-yarder. And this, here we'll attempt uh, what appears to be a 44-yard effort. And this is a good decision, Paul, because you'd like to go in at halftime with, with, with something for all the hard work. You've got three points on the board. You scored first. Now you've got 14 unanswered points. And if you could put three on the scoreboard to build on for the second half, it gives you a lot of positives to, to work from. From 44, he did not hit it well. And it's well shy and left. Up empty. Miami is held as DeBorg misfires from 44 yards out. And the kick really never had a chance. And the score remains the Canes 14 to 3. Another look at uh, not the tattoo, but rather the hold here by Robert Higgins. It looked like he never really got the ball down to, in a hurry. The, the kick was low, could have been blocked. Uh, they're fortunate that it wasn't blocked. Well, in the young history of this stadium, only three games old, Frank Costa owns the longest touchdown pass in at 82 yards. Here he's going to be sacked a second time. Taken down by Rashad Swing on the defensive tackle number 99. Credit that sack to Costa. He, he had uh, James Stewart open. He held on to the ball too long. He's looking downfield, looking downfield. And, you know, he's got to unload the football. You've got to have a clock in your head letting you know that you've only got so long that those that the offenders are going to be able to protect you. He just held on to the football too long there. Came through Zev Lamelski. Here's another look at it. The sophomore battling his way past the senior. And now Rutgers has used its third and final timeout. Let's say second timeout. They would have one remaining. So Rutgers will have one timeout remaining as Rashad Giddings is on the talk. There's defensive staff and you see Costa over talking strategy with Dennis Erickson. The report on Lucas is, here at the half, that he has a strained, if not sprained, right shoulder and will be examined in the Rutgers dressing room at halftime. And that was, as you pointed out, Nat, a, a shoulder that was operated on in January, and it caused him to miss spring practice. Luke, Luke's is really now just starting to come into his own. He missed a lot of snaps in the spring and then also in the fall, and you know, he's just starting to get the feel of things, and then to get an injury of this sort really hurts the, uh, the, the program. On second down, airing it out. Oh, a high arching pass. Deep downfield, intercepted. Intended for Yateel Green, and Rutgers and Curtis Trevitt have picked it off. Trevitt intercepts Costa near midfield. Frank is shaken up. Boy, he hung that ball awfully high, and Green, along with Trevitt, had to come back for it, and Trevitt came up with the football. But he, he tries to throw this up for a jump ball, and you know, true enough, this is as good as a punt, but you really don't to give the Rutgers football team the ball again on, on offense. Uh, there's no reason to throw this ball up for grab the way that it was thrown. And Costa, boom, dropped as he let it go by Swinger, who had the sack a moment ago. So Miami suffers its second turnover. Rutgers has turned it over twice as well. Costa having been picked off by Washington, and now Trivet, and with half a minute to go, an opportunity for Higgins. Over the middle, he fires incomplete. And you know what? Harper took his eyes off the football crossing the middle. Harper uh, heard those footsteps
steps at that point. Uh, he was open, and uh, he was running more of a post pattern than a square end, and Higgins tried to fit it in, but he never went for the football. He had a chance to catch this, Matt. I don't know if he had a chance to catch it, but he didn't make an effort. This is called intimidation at its finest. I can't believe it. He saw quite clearly Malcolm X. Pearson, who had put an X on his chest and drawn him up in the crosshairs. He never went for the football. It is second down with 28 seconds remaining. Harper and Funderburg out this way. Looking for Funderburg. He's covered. And now he gets it. But right back at the line of scrimmage, down he goes. Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker, stayed with him clear across the field, as did Rohan Marley. First time today that Miami recognized screen, and as the linemen started to come, they realized it was a screen, and they backed up, and he had nowhere to throw the football. Yeah. So Kenny Holmes late arriving at the quarterback, and the linebackers are all over Reggie Funderburg. And a timeout is taken with 19 seconds remaining. And uh, Rutgers has burned its third and final timeout. Well, that's what you want to see. The Miami defensive football team eventually recognizing the screen as they saw it. They realized that they weren't being blocked, and, and as a defensive lineman, you have to realize when guys are blocking you versus they're letting you in. If they're letting you in, you know the screen, or, the screen is coming or draw is coming, some kind of trick play that they're just trying to get you out of position. And that time, Miami recognized the screen and was able to hold it to no, to no gain. So the defensive unit talking to Dennis Erickson, Miami, with those two timeouts remaining, if they can come up with a pick here on what should be a passing situation, they would have time to move into Pruitt Field Goal range with a big play. Third down and nine here. Three receivers to the far side. Perhaps a Hail Mary play. That's what I expect to see, and, and, and they really have them outman, so to speak. But Taglia had to go off his fingertips. He was open, would have had the first down, and could have fought his way to the boundary, and Marley off the deflection nearly came up with the interception. It's been a rough first half for Bataglia. Yeah, that's a ball that he should have caught. Uh, that, it was a well-thrown ball, and you know, he's got to come down with that. It was a little high, but you know, when you're a big tight end, you know you need to make that catch to be an All-American. 14 seconds remaining. Jamie German. Set the field, the punt by Sloven. And Sloven takes it at his 35. Miami runs into him. That'll draw a flag. He got knocked down hard. The ball is down at the 29-yard line. But C.J. Richardson knocked down the punter in Sloven. Receiving team. There's two varieties. There's running into the kicker and roughing the kicker. And the greater of the two had earned for the Scarlet Knights the first down with only four ticks of the clock remaining prior to half time. Yeah, this is just a bad decision by CJ. You know, he's one, he's been one of the great special team players throughout the history of uh, of his his tenure there. And you know, he's got to make a decision. If he can't block it, he's got to get away from the kicker. And there he tried to do more than he should have. Stephen Harper said, no, 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 shaking his head, no, we will not own the football. Doesn't look to be enough. Well, here for Miami, it's seventh penalty of the first half. Running into the kicker, receiving team, penalty has been declined. And the reason it's declined is the fact it would have been only a five-yard penalty and uh, Rutgers would have had to kick it again to the dangerous German. They're content to play defense here with four seconds remaining. Just keep Miami backed up and do not allow the Canes perhaps to have Jamie break or Jamie rather break one free. German to the far side, Yatiel Green trots out to the bottom of your screen along with Jonathan Harris. Final play of the first half for Frank Costa. Well, Al 
Shipman is a kid that has speed to burn, as we all just saw there. On a draw, he's able to take it almost a length of the field to put the Hurricanes on the board again. Just a very basic draw where he reverses his field and then watch him turn on the speed. Shipman, who can motor, has had a big play touchdown of his own this year. 82-yarder. Rumbles up the sideline and with German providing interference very nearly. Ran into the end zone. 14 to 3 at intermission. Joe Rose in our halftime show just ahead. From this, the campus that gave birth to the great college game. Rutgers University here in New Jersey. second half nears here on Sunshine Network as Miami looks to build upon his 14-3 lead at intermission. Hello once again. Uh, with Nat, I'm uh, Paul Kennedy. Nat, let's get right to the highlights. Rutgers may be trailing, but in the first two quarters, they mounted a pretty good pass rush against Frank Costa. Well, Bob Sneathan, who's a good pass rusher, avoids the block of Gerard Davnis, and then here you see Ricky Perry wait too long before he had tapped Sneathan, and he's able to come up with the sack of Costa. Rutgers and Eddie DeBorg had managed to boot a field goal to lead 3 to nothing heading into the second frame and then Costa on third and 17 would unload to Christy Jones. Right, he hits Christy Jones on a square end and then Christy Jones just turns on the speed and you'll see Jamie German comes in to cut off the pursuit and put a big block to get him into the end zone. We mentioned a short while ago that was a huge play. A Warren Sapp had a big play too in the first half. You'll see that in a moment and here is Stewart galloping his way on a 14-yard run into the end zone for touchdown number two. Well, James Stewart got great blocking at the point of a Attack by Casey Jones, Terrell Green, and all, the whole host of that offensive line to get him into the end zone. And as we take a look here, we've got uh, Ray Lucas as he starts to scramble, and this is where he hurt his shoulder there, Paul. He, he's got these two big guys, Kennard Lang and Warren Sapp, landing on his uh, injured shoulder. And, you know, we don't know if he's going to be back for the second half. Yeah, we will get you a medical report in just a moment. Our second half kickoff is moments away here on Sunshine Network. Numbers on the red scoreboard in the south end zone here in this first ever trip to Rutgers by the Miami Hurricanes. And now our halftime statistics provided by Gatorade. When you're thirsty, it's got to be Gatorade. A Miami halfway home to close to 500 total yards in this game, sitting on 247. And that look how evenly balanced the ground game and the air attack is at the moment. Well, that's what you strive for with a good offense, balance. And, you know, they came into the ball game today knowing they had to run the football. And so far, they've been able to run it and they've been able to provide the big play as well. Jamie German, a very short kickoff, fielded it at his 15-yard line and then is roped down at the 20. And on the tackle, Paul Rivers, a reserve defensive back. And there you see Lucas on the sideline. No word as of yet. Joe Rose should have something for us shortly, but as he's taking off his pads, obviously the word is not good. Robert Higgins will be coming on to replace him. Costa opens the second half after firing for close to 125 yards. He had four completions for 123 and that touchdown. And as he ended the first half, he hands it inside to Stewart to open the third quarter. And this is what Miami managed to do with its share of possessions in the first two quarters. Couple of touchdowns in there. And then do not forget Al Shipman rambling down the sidelines, nearly popping that draw play just prior to halftime. Well, he's a guy that has tremendous speed. You know, you've got uh, James Stewart, who runs a 10-400 meters, but uh, Shipman is probably the fastest uh, offensive player on the football team. Second down, we'll call it seven for Costa. Out of the snap of center, Casey Jones off the counter. Stewart will work to the left side, and he cannot get out of his own backfield. Jen Guarnera, the game captain today, the junior from Plainville, New Jersey, along with sophomore linebacker Rusty Schwartz, number 59, teamed on the tackle. Guarnera with good size. He's 6'5". Guarnera did a good job of staying outside and, and not letting Jay Ina log him in, and he was able to come up with the tackle. Third down and 11. And for all the bullying and all the penalties and all the critical turnovers, Rutgers is not dead yet. And the crowd reminds the Scarlet Knights of that fact. 
Top drivers tear up the track, pushing for pole position in a Winston qualifying night. Then, NASCAR's rising stars show the top dogs how it's done in the Winston Sportsman 100. Engines start rumbling Wednesday at 7, live on Sunshine. Recently, Congress looked toward the future for all Americans by passing the Interstate Banking Bill. It opens the way for banks to provide service across state lines, so that someday you'll be able to walk into a bank that can help you no matter where you are or where you're from. So if you're a business traveler, if you work in one state but live in another, own your own business, have to relocate your family, have loved ones in other states, or find yourself away from home for any reason, interstate banking means financial service will become more convenient and more consistent. That's why in the 1900 communities we serve, Nations Bank will be working to help you realize your dreams by taking steps to bring the business of your bank closer to the realities of your life. Back to the dream. The games that took your breath away. The players who made you believe. The NBA's greatest games, Mondays at 9 on Sunshine. Ray Lucas uh, has a sprained shoulder. He will not return. They'll check him after the game to see how bad the injury is, but he will not return today. So Robert Higgins takes over. And on the opening possession of the second half for the Scarlet Knights, it's a solid gain of four as Bruce Presley hits it in up off the left side. And uh, guess who? Warren Sapp makes a tackle. It's a gain of five. Once again, here's a look at the play that it's knocked uh, Lucas out of the ball game, and that's Warren Sapp and Kennard Lang falling on top of him, landing on that bad shoulder. It's the eighth carry today by Thunder. Bruce Presley will remind you, Terrell Willis is lightning. Five-yard gain there. We'll call it 30 yards and eight carries for him. Stephen Harper comes in motion. And the end around to Harper. Harper needs a block. And just across midfield, a gain of about one. Ray Lewis runs him out of bounds. He couldn't get that block. And Lewis right down the line of scrimmage, right into the boundary. Ray, Ray Lewis does a good job of recognizing plays and formations because Kennard Lang bit the cheese. He lost containment, but Ray Lewis was there to come up with the, the tackle. Rutgers scoring on its second possession. That was it offensively. That fumble, Miami 44, was devastating. There is Harper. 4-3 speed for the freshman. West Bridges, Bruce Presley. Pair running backs. And again, the center and John Bleich doesn't get the snap count right. Everybody moved. But Bleich... Maybe with the uh, new quarterback in Higgins, the snap count a bit different. Dead ball, illegal snap, snap. offense. 
that's a good point. But uh, once again, it's a critical mistake on third down. You got third short, and here the, the ball never comes up. And it moves the Rutgers defense ba offense back to West down third and long, and you know, takes them out of good field position. The eighth penalty today establishes a third and nine for Rutgers from their own 46-yard line. Again, Harper, only Thunderbird, top of your screen. Higgins, the inexperienced junior, fires and it's broken up, intended for Thunderbird. Broken up at the 44-yard line. Carlos Jones along with Lewis surrounding Thunderbird to bat it away. What a big game Carlos Jones has had here, too. Eight tackles in the first half. Jones did an excellent job of just trailing Th Thunderbird in, and as the ball got there, reached around and swatted it away. The punter in Sloven to kick it for the first time in the second half. Hits it very, very badly. It bounds on the ground. He may be an, an intending just to direct it away from Jamie German. He did that intentionally, or would he rather put a boom into it? I think he's trying to kick it away. He's trying to kick it to one side or the other where he can pin him, pin him down to one side. But looked like the ball's just coming off the side of his foot. Maybe it's the, the wet traction that's not allowing him to take his normal steps. From the 23, Miami in possession when we return. I'm Kyle Petty. Hey, with Kendall Oil, you don't need a race car to win. To enter Kendall's fall sweepstakes, you could drive off in this loaded Pontiac Grand Prix or win a Kendall racing jacket or cap. And that's not all. You can get double mail-in rebates on Kendall's Superb 100 and GT1. That's up to eight bucks off two cases of Kendall. Heck, with a sweepstakes and double rebate, you can drive the speed limit and still win. Kendall Motor Oil. Hey, man, buy it at these locations. In the NFL, there's only one sports drink, and it's got to be Gatorade. An ordinary beer can, barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild it. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic can. Coors Light will be that can. Better than it was before. Taller, thinner, silver. Next on the Coors Light Channel. Miami's defense able to give the offense the ball right away, and here with Morris Joe. Coach McMacken talked at halftime about intensity in the second half. It was 14-3 a week ago, and he said, defense, let's get rid of it now. Let's come out and play hard in the second half so that they can score points. We don't have to worry about the offense. Back up to you guys. You're right, Joe, and Matt, it was a 14-3 score advantage. Miami, when the third quarter began a week ago in the Orange Bowl, and Washington scored. 35 points in that, uh, or 25 rather, in that eventful third quarter. Those three quick touchdowns in less than a couple of minutes. Well, very dis disastrous uh, third quarter for them last week, but uh, you know they've come out the first uh, th first uh, series on the uh, third quarter and took the ball away. And here comes Miami with shipping on a reverse. He had the big gainer to end the first half. This time hemmed in and dropped shy of the line of scrimmage by Alcides Catano. Catano, the linebacker. That play never had a chance. Uh, the Rutgers football team was not fooled. They didn't over-pursuit, and you, you weren't able to get Shipman outside. So here you see great pursuit, as you see Sneathan and everybody flowing back in, and you've got four or five tacklers around the ball carrier. And Mark Washington, number 23, came flying into your picture. A loss of a yard and a half. We'll call it second down and 11. Miami operating from its own 22-yard line. KC snaps it to Costa, backpedaling, being chased, down he goes, sacked a third time today. Jim Guarnera with the sack, that 
front wall has been impressive. Kinnear had a, had a good pass rush against Alan Simonette there, and Simonette is just trying to push him by the pocket, and then Costa actually flows into where Simonette is pushing the defender. A loss on the play of six yards, five and a half or so. It's third down and 16. Miami with the line of scrimmage at its 17-yard line must cross its own 33 to hold on to the football. I recall in a similar situation, Miami in the first half hit Christy Jones for a touchdown. Now this play is stopped just as it begins. We're throwing to Shipman, but we'll have a procedure call. Dead ball, delay of game, offense. Miami's seventh penalty of the contest. Dennis Erickson shaking his head. Costa with the new play. And the Miami offense, the quarterback bears so much responsibility. The reads and what have you, making sure he recognizes the coverage. Here are five receivers set on third and now 21. Inside his own five-yard line. Costa feels the heat. Fires with the heat on him, and it's caught. Caught for a first down by A.C. Tellison. First down at the 36-37 yard line. Once again, you see the acrobatic skills of that hurricane wide receiver core as you ended up with two guys in the same area. You've got Chris T. Jones coming across the middle, who I really think this ball is intended for because Costa's looking at him all the way. And A.C. Tellison goes up and makes the grab right in front of him. Costa, Big first down. Yeah, with his first completion of the second half, his fifth of the game, and it's a gain of 25 yards on third down. Costa now with 150 yards, close to it, passing today. And he checks off at the line of scrimmage, nursing a 14-3 third quarter lead. To the boundary, it sails, and it's nearly picked off. Recall a week ago when Jamie German slipped and Washington went the distance. This time, Yateel Green slipped, and that was nearly six the other way. Watch this, number 22 has it hit him right between the twos. Well, Michael Roberts must know something here. Costa checked off, they were checking to a quick quick hitch, and Roberts never moved. He just sat on it, and, you know, he should have picked that off for a touchdown. That's the pawning. Same plays by Saturday. Rutgers jump. Now the whistles. Here comes still another flag. Stop the clock. Referee John Smith may have to get a new whistle after this game's over. Well, this is a penalty marred football game, and uh, this is what drive coaches Good mad. Ball. Offsides, defense. On Graber's troops, and for Rutgers, that is their ninth penalty of the afternoon. They have more than 90 yards in penalties. And we've played just over two quarters. Curtis Tribbett back into the game. Michael Roberts, who dropped a potential interception, returns to the Rutgers sideline. So Tribbett and Ward on the corners, Washington and Kelly, the safeties, in that secondary. Chris T. Jones to the far side. Jamie German out that way as well. A.C. Tellison to the bottom of your screen. And it is James Stewart for a tough yard. It'll be a yard and a half. Guarnera hits him just above the knees. It's been a day in which Dennis Erickson has been content to tuck the ball safely into James Stewart's arms. 16 carries for the 235-pound junior. He carried the ball 14 times for the entire game a year ago against Rutgers. So he's seen more work in just over a half today than he did all last year. The game plan decidedly different. Trent Jones in motion this way. Costa finds him at midfield with daylight. He's at the 40, uses the block 30, and down to the 29-yard line. They run Trent Jones in motion, and as they've done so often in the early part of this season, Costa connects with him for a big game. 
play selection by the Hurricanes. They bring him in motion and then bring him back across the grain and catch him coming underneath. And then you see Trent Jones showing his speed before Washington is able to track him down and come up with the tackle. A gain of 26 now. Here's another look at it, and Trent Jones does a good job of setting up his block. Chris Jones out front getting a block, and here comes Washington, who is the leading tackler for this Rutgers football team, and any time you're thrown safe to the leading tackler, you've got trouble. Stewart pounds inside. Inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. Keith Bryant, that Largo, Florida senior, number 91 for Rutgers. And on the tackle. So a couple of big plays. The uh, third down completion of uh, 25 yards to A.C. Tellison. And here, Trent Jones in motion and then snaring a 25-yard catch and run. Miami second and five, driving on Rutgers inside the 25 and leading 14 to three. Stewart sets in the backfield. Rutgers shows blitz and they jump. Rashawn Giddings tried to stop as he started to blitz. Came across the neutral zone, and that'll cross Rutgers five more. And if you're keeping up with us, that is the 10th penalty to them. There, there he goes. There you see. Just Dead can't ball. keep his footing. And, uh, yeah, they're trying to time that blitz, which, uh, you know, we talked about starting the telecast, but Ray Lewis is real good at that. And, You've seen several times when they wanted to come with the blitz, they started a little early. The Hurricanes had a long count on it, and they showed it and jumped off sides. On a dark Saturday afternoon, the lights have been on throughout this football game. Turf, as you know, is what. Actually, Miami will need a yard here to earn the first. A gambling down, perhaps, Tellison and Chris T. Jones. Top of your screen, in the tandem. Again, they keep it on the ground, and this is Stewart. And Stewart's inside the 15, first down, 14-yard line. Stewart just has tremendous leg strength, which allows him to run through tacklers. And as you can see, very seldom will you be able to grab him around the legs and come down. And here you see him. He runs into his own man here. He gives uh, Perry the little boost there, and then he just runs through the tackles. He's got tremendous leg strength for, for a fullback. Strong safety, Mark Washington, will end up making the stop. Here's another look at it. German now in your teal green to the top of your picture. Here comes the blitz for Rutgers, a Stewart. Right into it and driven back. No gain on the play in second down. Now they're gambling a bit down here deep uh, is Rutgers, Nat. Yeah, Rutgers is walking six men up, and sometimes they're going an eight-man front, and you know, they're just trying to take the ball away, trying to make some, something happen in the hurricane backfield, and I expect to see them check off and go up top to one of those gifted receivers here pretty soon. 14 to 3 Canes, and uh, Frank Costa wants to be sure he has the play, so he uses the first of three timeouts for Miami with just over six and a half minutes remaining in this, the third quarter. The other end of that headset, the offensive coordinator, Rich Olson, talking to Dennis Erickson. A pause in the action will step aside as well here in the first Big East Conference game of the year for the University of Miami. If you'd like to lose weight once and for all, here's good news. I'm Ann Fletcher. As a professional nutritionist, I've studied hundreds of people who have lost weight and kept it off for 5, 10, 20 years and more. Their inspirational, real-life stories are all in my new book, Thin for Life. Learn the 10 keys to mastering your own weight, the hard-earned secrets of people who are living proof that you can lose weight for good. Thin for Life can help you stay thin permanently, without pills or potions, without becoming an exercise fanatic, or giving up good, satisfying food. If you've tried and tried to lose weight only to gain it back, Thin for Life can change your life once and for all. Order Thin for Life at the direct from publisher price of just $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-652-1212. Order now and receive this simply healthful cookbook full of delicious low-fat recipes absolutely free. Call now, 1-800-652-1212. flying excitement. You can 
be part of it with Dalton season tickets. Feel the action. Feel the noise. Feel the excitement. For season ticket information, call 305-620-2578 or 1-800-255-3094. When tracking college football, keep your eye on the Hurricanes. The experts agree. Thompson newspapers say they're loaded with talent. Street and Smith calls them a title contender. Miami should reassert its superiority this year. Miami Hurricanes and Sunshine on track for another winning season. Miami coming off its own timeout, facing second and nine. As you see, playing before the largest crowd ever assembled here on the campus of Rutgers University. And again to Stewart. Keith Bryant, the first man to hit him. It's tough to run against an eight-man front, and when they start walking those linebackers up into the gaps, there's just nowhere to run. I don't care how good your offensive line blocks, because you're just outmanned, and you know that's what happened on that play there, Paul. Here comes the play from the sideline. The messenger is Jonathan Harris. Derek Harris will leave the game, as will Yatiel Green. A tight end used as a blocker primarily, along with the receiver in green. So Christy Jones, who has a touchdown reception today, along with Jamie German and Jonathan Harris. Three receivers, and now Harris in motion to the bottom of your picture. Costa slips, throws, caught by his tight end, shy of the first down at the five-yard line. Saeed Tucker, on the third down reception, drives the ball to the six-yard line. And it's fourth down, and a decision to be made on the Kane sideline. As we look at the throw here, this ball is a little bit behind him, and Saeed really expected to get hit there and wasn't able to turn up field. That ball would have been out front. He'd have been able to turn up field and get the first down. But he, he did the right thing, making sure of the catch first. It is a gain of nine, but they're going for it on fourth down. Harris on the corner. Stewart, the lone setback. Stewart behind Harris. Does not. Is held on fourth down. Well, Miami has tried to run that play three times during this drive, and every time they've been stuck. They've, they've split the receivers to the wide side, tried to run into the boundary, and they've been stuffed all three times. And once again, on fourth down, Rutgers comes up big. As you see, the safety comes up and makes the tackle. Mark Washington. Mark Washington, once again, on the tackle. Even with Derek Harris leading the interference, Stewart, who's been all reliable today, unable to get it done. Now Rutgers with that young quarterback and Robert Higgins in the game has a single setback and Presley behind it. Play action. Higgins going to throw out of his own end zone, unloads it incomplete. Lucky to get it away. It's surprised that they didn't grind it out of there. Instead, risking throwing out of their own end zone. Well, that, that hurricane front four is really starting to come now. Then, and they're getting into the gaps. And here you see Warren Sapp on a running down. He's in the backfield, forcing the quarterback to get rid of the football early. Higgins has only completed one of his last five passing attempts. And that was for only a single yard. He's been ineffective to this point, throwing the football. Just two for six today for five yards since replacing Ray Lucas, who was injured. Second down. Bridges in motion. Now they'll run it to Presley, who pops across the 10, out to the 11, 12 yard line. Well, what happens, Paul, anytime you lose a quarterback of Ray Lucas status, the ability to run with the football, that has to, to really change what you can do offensively and defensively. You gear up according to the personnel that's in the ball game. Corin Francis, meanwhile, the linebacker who missed the last game with the knee injury, being helped off the field. As you see, Looks like he's uh, re-entered that uh, left knee there again, and you know, hopefully it's not serious. Tuan Russell, number 45, will take his place. So Russell and Lewis, 
and the linebacking core at the moment. Third and five. Higgins out of the shotgun. Throws Bataglia. Finally makes a big catch. First down. Across the 25 to the 27. That was just a good throw and catch by Bataglia and, and Lewis. I mean, Higgins, because Teron Russell is all over this play. He's right there. He's got him covered like a blanket. And he, as he tries to dive through, good concentration by Marco Bataglia to catch the football and get a field. Pearson upended the big tight end, but not before he has his third catch today. And a gain on the play. It will carry him up to the 28-yard line. 15-yard pickup. And a loss. Willis rolled out of bounds. The crowd wants a late hit call. Twan Russell. It's over that way, as was Chad Wilson. Pick up, well, maybe half a yard. Second down. And it has started to rain and rain hard. Rain throughout the morning, but we've been pretty fortunate today, Nat, until this point. It's held off pretty good, and uh, this is what you don't want to see if you're coming from behind. You don't want the rain. You want to be able to throw the football and move it up and down the field, but uh, with Higgins in there, They've got to be able to establish the run and give him a little bit more time to throw the football. Play action, throws to the flat, Funderburk on one knee. He's down right there after the gain of two. Once your knee touches, if you're in possession of the football, of course, in the college game, you are down. And the problem is, if you don't signal yourself as down, you get up and you start to run, and you get Marvin Davis coming in to make sure you're down. As we take another look at this replay, ball's thrown out to Funder Funderburk, and he gets up. He starts to run. The whistle's blow, but a little too late, because here comes Marvin. The pass was low. In this rain, as you see. And timeout is called by Rutgers. Rutgers calls timeout with 3.25 remaining. What is now a very wet third quarter and facing an important play, third and seven. As the two teams discuss strategy, we'll pause as well here on Sunshine Network. It's been time again, and Don Shula's ready to take Miami into the highlight zone. So get ready, because Sunshine Network's going to take you along for the ride. Kerry Ross, join us next week when we take a look at that much anticipated Shula versus Shula. David versus Don will also look ahead to the Bills. All the best plays from the huddle to the hits. The game within the game. Brought to you live each week. The Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. 7 p.m. on Sunshine. It's a test of nerves. A play for perfection. The right combination can make you number one. Game, set, match. The ball, deceptive in flight, destructive with speed, out of control. It will crush you faster. It will make you number one. Prime tennis. Game, set, match. On Sunshine. When we're not looking, Governments deny people their basic human rights. When we're not listening, people are tortured, imprisoned, and killed for their beliefs or simply their identity. We at Amnesty believe each of us has a moral obligation to see, to hear, and to speak out. Call 1-800-AMNESTY. It's your human right. 14-3. Miami leading Rutgers as the skies open up here on the first day of October. You see the time remaining in the third quarter. And unfortunately, Corn Francis receiving medical treatment on that left knee. Let's check in with Joe Rose. Thanks, Paul. Corwin Francis has re-sprained his knee once again. He will not return the rest of the day. They're going to try to keep that swelling down. As you can see right now, they're icing it up. Back to you. All right, Joe. Big loss there. Rutgers coming off its timeout. will dispatch both Stephen Harper and number nine Chris Hutton to the bottom of your screen. Send Funderburk to the far side right. Setting up the screen. And it was nearly picked off. Very nearly intercepted by Ray Lewis. Where was that going? Miami defensed it perfectly. We've got another flag down. You know, 
eligible downfield offense. There you see Ray Lewis doing what he's supposed to do, diagnosing the screen and staying in the middle of it as they're trying to get the ball to Presley. And then uh, Kenny Holmes put a shot on Higgins there. So it's fourth down off the ineligible receiver downfield. One of the linemen setting up the screen. Came out of the five-yard zone. And for Higgins, back to the sidelines to regroup. There is still time. Miami is not unreachable at this moment, but that could change here. It's still a 14-3 ball game, and Miami has moved the ball, but they haven't been able to put any points on the board. And you know, So Rutgers is still in this ball game. They're just two possessions away from being able to take the lead. Jamie German should have a return as he fields it on the run at the 45, and now not much of a return across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Slovan, who has struggled, had one of his uh, better efforts there, although it leaves Miami uh, just outside Rutgers' territory at its 47-yard line. Now that game plan to, to have Stewart carry the ball a lot looks even wiser, doesn't it? Grind out the clock on a wet afternoon. Well, this is this is the kind of weather that uh, you would like to ground it out. And you know we've got Al Shipman in the ball game who had the big run at the end of the ball game, so they're going to give him a shot at it. The sophomore from West Palm Beach sent into the game by Dennis Erickson. Costa hunts over the middle and finds German at midfield. Flip screen to German crossing over the middle. Well, he had two options here. You see Costa go back. He's got Al Shipman flaring out of the backfield. And, you know, the linebackers have to respect Al Shipman. And in comes Jamie German. As you see him start to make a cut up field, loses his footing. Otherwise, it could have been a bigger game. In the slot now is Jones. Chris T. Jones out there. Trent and Chris T. This way, A.C. Tellison. Delay handoff. Shipman trying to be kind of shifty in his own backfield. Made one miss, not two. Well, this is kind of tough for a shifty back. You know, you, you've got to be able to make your move and go. When you start making too many moves, you're liable to lose your footing on this wet surface here today. Dennis is going to have to find himself a hat. Boy, it's right in here. wonder how Joe's doing. Got an umbrella, I'm sure. You mean the mutter? Joe the mutter? We will check out those mudding skills. Fighting hard as you say. There is Joe. I told you, he always find refuge. Second down and needing a dozen. The screen to the very fast Shipman. And Shipman has popped out of bounds inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. Solid hit made by Derek Ward, the quarterback on the far side. Derek, did a, Derek Ward did a good job there, sitting back and uh, waiting till the ball is thrown and coming up, reacting up and uh, knocking Chipman out of bounds. And there's a good look at how the wealth of the receiving core, the ball is spread it around. Jones and German combining for 27 combined today. Uh, Jones has two more catches, German one more. In fact, that 13-yard completion a little bit ago was the first time it, he'd caught a pass today. Third and eight. Possession snap, an important one, too. And look who jumps. Rutgers has done it again. Look like they're really falling prey to that hard count by Frank Costa. snap count today and pulling the Scarlet Knights offside and here we see it again as they start to jump trying to get into the backfield they can't stay poised record if you will the 11th penalty of this game charged to Rutgers now with 101 yards in penalties they are in triple digits how tough is it to beat anybody with those kind of mistakes third down and Shipman, the lone running back, he takes the handoff, has the first down. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. That was a saving tackle as he tried to jump through that hole. If they don't grab the leg as he goes through, here we see him as he goes through there. He, you know, for a little back, 
he got a lot of courage as you see him just jump through, knife through the hole, and if he came through there clear, he was off to the races again. Relieving here, James Stewart, who had to work so often in this game to carry the ball 20 times today. And now Shipman with his third carry. And they were going to set up the screen, and here came the heat, and Costa just dumped it free. Unloaded the ball, and... Devlin, Shane Devlin rather, the sophomore, was in his face. Number 55. The first incomplete pass in five tries for Costa. Just had to get rid of it. But he just did a good job of avoiding the site, getting rid of the football, and uh, trying to throw a little quick screen out there, but no one was there. Heady play by Frank Costa. You teal green as you see to the top of your picture on second down. Gosh, he's going to go the other way. Sherman right through his gloved hands. Climbed the ladder at the 17-yard line and could not make the catch with the wet football. Behind him was a charging free safety in Thomas Kelly. It's third down. Ball's a little high, and it kind of catch that uh, is, is tough to come down with. But, you know, when you get a guy of Jamie German's ability, you expect him to come down with that catch. Sometimes you got to help your quarterback out, especially if he's struggling and not putting it on the money all day. Here is the seventh play of this possession for Miami after taking over in Rutgers territory. Third and ten, leading 14 to three. Less than two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Shipman behind Costa. Short drop. Costa the post drop. What a catch! A teal green the freshman makes at the ten yard line. The pass behind him and he snares it for the first down. Now we see why Coach Erickson is so excited about young man the way he reaches back goes up takes the ball away from the defender he did something similar last week against the Washington Washington Huskies and this is just a great catch Teal much bigger than 6'2 on that play, wasn't he? 6'2 and ha must have a vertical of about 43. He's in that Michael Jordan era. Great job of just going up. Good concentration coming down with the catch. First down for Miami. Shipman cuts outside for the end zone. Flags down. Shipman into the end zone. Touchdown, but we should have a hold called on this play that will bring it back. They're going to call this back, Paul, but I like the explosiveness of Al Shipman once he sees the hole. A penalty erasing the touchdown and the 10-yard uh, step off will push Miami back to the 20-yard line. Let's take another look at see if we can pick up the hole here. you got Gerard Daphnis, and I think that's where it's at right there, but, you know, that was a hole that was not necessary because Shipman was already into the end zone. Great explosion. Offense. Ten yards, penalized from the spot of the foul. First down. That is the eighth infraction to be assessed to Miami. Correct that. Uh, the seventh today that erases that touchdown gallop by dangerous Al Shipman. So Miami at first and goal here will actually can earn the first down if it can get the ball inside the one. So first and ten. Two and a half, actually. The short completion on the crossing route. Catano, the linebacker, took him down when he came across the middle. Well, they're just basically getting as much as they can. They're, they're bringing blitzers, getting a good outside rush by the defensive ends or the linebackers, and forcing Costa to get rid of the ball in a hurry when he's not able to throw it deep downfield. And Frank's doing a good job of taking what the defense is giving held on to this ball for close to 10 plays now. Here comes the ninth snap here. Here's the first, or the third quarter draws to an end. Jamie German bent back at the 15-yard line. This Rutgers defense has come to play this afternoon. A tough group. Yeah, they've been a much maligned defense the past two ball games, but today they came in ready to play, and it's been the offense of the Scarlet Knights that have not been able to produce. But when you're playing against a great defense like the Hurricanes, it's kind of tough. Here they do. Once again, you see Miami, because of Jamie German's running ability, they just want to get the ball into his hands and see if he can't spring it. Well, this game is three quarters complete. The 125th anniversary contest. 
contest. Erickson and company visiting Rutgers for the first time in school history and leading as we head to the fourth. Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, Mr. Barkley wanted to say that uh, he and his friends will play a lousy round of golf for a fine cause in the uh, Charles Barkley Celebrity Golf Invitational. It's Monday at 8 on Sunshine. Uh, thank you. He revolutionized the field of music, captured the hearts of young and old, became a living legend in his own time. Now, the greatest performers of our time honor the man who started it all by singing his songs from his hometown in a night that's fit only for the king. Harris Casinos presents Elvis, the tribute. Join Rock's biggest stars in their salute to the king, only on pay-per-view. Meet the Johnsons. Bill is a computer programmer. Susan is an executive secretary. But Bill was laid off six months ago. And job prospects weren't looking great. The family was having financial trouble. Then Bill heard about Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Central Florida. They spoke with Bill's creditors and worked out a repayment schedule that made everyone happy. Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Central Florida, a nonprofit United Way agency, has helped thousands of people. Let us help you. It's free and confidential. Call today. NASCAR's top drivers tear up the track, pushing for pole position in a Winston qualifying night. Then, NASCAR's rising stars show the top dogs how it's done in the Winston Sportsman 100. Engines start rumbling Wednesday at 7, live on Sunshine. Well, the spirit of a college game here on the campus in which the very first gridiron contest was ever played back in 1869. It's an important snap, third and 15 for Miami, nursing this 14-3 lead as we sail into the fourth quarter. For Costa, he'll keep it on the ground. A shipment wrapped up, taken down, and Miami will send Dane Pruitt onto the field to try and increase its lead. Bob Sneven, the right end, credited with the tackle on that snap. Bob Sneven is playing a heck of a football game, and you know he's done a good job of rushing the quarterback, and here you see him, once he sees the handoff, of coming down the line of scrimmage and able to make the hit before Shipley can get upfield. Dane Pruitt booted four field goals against the Huskies a week ago to tie the uh, Miami single game record. Here for a 30-yard try, as you see, angled to his immediate left. And the kick is away, and he nailed it, although it was a sidewinder. Went through the upright sideways, but that one counts, and it's now 17 to 3 Canes. Wasn't pretty, but there's nowhere in the scoring column that uh, you get to describe how it went through. It's still a field goal. It's still three points. Pruitt with his first three-pointer of the afternoon. Miami's lead swells to two touchdowns on this damp Saturday afternoon in New Jersey. Jam. Can you dig it? It's time to jam with college football. All season on Sunshine. Can you dig it? something there not every cultural activity appeals to everyone it's so powerful i don't see it that's why 23,000 arts and humanities groups invite you to find something you'll get excited about just call for a free brochure i think i'm getting into this they're tuning up the arts and humanities there is something in it for you there's a lot going on in your community for a free brochure on how to get involved call our toll-free number the campus of Rutgers University with Joe Rose and that more. I'm Paul Kennedy. The Kings scoring to open the fourth quarter on the 30-yard field goal by 
by Dane Pruitt. The cap, an 11 play possession, held the ball for close to four minutes. And here are Gatorade statistics through three quarters of action. Twice as much offense for Miami than Rutgers, and you see those penalties, Nat. 11 committed by the Scarlet Knights. There's no way you can play a, a good football team and commit that many penalties and expect to win the ball game. Uh, that's something that I'm, I'm pretty sure that they'll get corrected this week because you, you can't beat yourself. They had opportunities early in the first half to, to walk away with, with scores, and through penalties, they uh, stopped themselves. And I'm sure Coach Doug Graber will get that corrected. Terrell Willis, along with Kevin Williams, set to receive Pruitt's kickoff from his 35. Low line drive kick, bounds around, and here comes Willis to the 15, the 20, the 25, and the 30. Loose ball, fumble, but Rutgers goes and gets it back. It popped out of there, and Aaron Crowder had to hop on the loose ball as Willis really took a shot as he came across the 25-yard line. Pruitt capping that long possession. It, it seemed much longer than 354. Yeah, but Miami did what they really needed to do in the third quarter, which was take control of the ball game where they started to control the football. They had two long drives, but uh, they were able to take a lot of time off and not give Rutgers a chance to get the football in their hands and move upfield for a score. So Miami less than 15 minutes away from what would be its very first Big East Conference win of the year. An opportunity to climb back in America's top 10 as Higgins pumps once, throws deep down the sideline, going for Fender Burke, and it's broken up incomplete. Incomplete on the play. Twan Russell had him stride for stride. The ball should have been caught. Uh, And that was just a miscue by the defense. There's no way you want to get your linebacker isolated on their number one receiver going all the way to the goal line the way Miami did then. What well, might have helped the Knights here with their backup quarterback in the game and Lucas Andrews trying to mount something offensively. But let's give Russell credit. He ran step for step with him all the way and was right there to sort of block his view. Presley. Bangs away inside, out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. And they unpile him. Baraka Short is in the game. See 54 there. Dwayne Johnson. Well for Miami, Dwayne Johnson. Giving Warren Sapp a breather. Game four, third down and six. James Burgess, the outside linebacker, the sophomore. Homestead, part of the play. Thunderbird left. Stephen Harper, the freshman right. This young receiving core. An important snap, third and six. High snap. Higgins pulls it down, swings it out to Presley. Going for the first down marker, and I don't know that he got there. It will be all that close. Let's see. It needed to reach and cross the 42. Did he get the left foot spot or the right foot spot? I think he got it. Looked like he got a good spot there. Perhaps by the length of the football, uh, Coach Moore, you're right. Let's bring out the chains. See if he got it. He lowered his head or he squared and took off. He knew the point he had to reach. By the length of the football. Let's give Rutgers credit. They, uh, even though they're down 17 to three, they have not abandoned their game plan. They're still trying to run the football and screen and draw and do all the things they came to the ball game doing that were successful. So they have not abandoned their game plan going into the fourth quarter. A gain of six, the fifth completion on the afternoon for Higgins. Now with 29 yards through the air and trailing by two touchdowns. Play action quickly out to Funderburg at midfield down to the 47-yard line. James Burgess, the linebacker, hitting him from behind. Taken down by James Burgess. Underbrook may think they should have had more. Well, you, you, you have to wonder why they don't throw this ball to Funderburg a little bit more often. There's no one on him. He's an uncovered man, and all the quarterback has to do is take the snap, pop up, and throw it. you got a five- or six-yard gain every time. An 11-yard pickup that time on what is Funderburg's seventh reception of the afternoon. 
Harper sent to the top of your picture. Bridges on the corner. Harper comes in motion. Willis takes the handoff. Willis inside the 45 and down to the 41-yard line. Terrell Willis, the Big East Rookie of the Year last season, the top running back in the Big East a year ago. Kennard Lang made the stop. We haven't mentioned the fact that uh, the top two running backs to come into the Big East in the last two years are Presley and Willis, which has to bode well in the coming years for Rutgers. They call him Thunder and Presley, number 44, and Willis, number 31. Without a touchdown thus far today, we're in the fourth quarter. Second and six. And here comes Lightning. And Lightning and Willis is inside the 35 and driving now to the 32. Malcolm Pearson, Chad Wilson, a couple of defensive backs made the tackle. It's first down, Scarlet Knights. Here we see another, another look at that offensive line just doing a good job man blocking and getting Terrell Willis through there. And, you know, this wet surface is sort of helping Miami today because when he goes to make a cut, he's slipping. You know, you, we're not getting the true benefit of seeing Terrell Willis with the quick feet, the sharp cuts that he can make. A gain on the play of eight. He's carried the ball ten times today, has Willis for nearly 40 yards. Stays in for blocking purposes. Higgins, he's going to be sacked. Back at the 42-yard line. Refused to go down for a while. Pat Riley had him wrapped up. Kenny Holmes, number 90, was there, as was Kennard Lang. He can just about credit every member of that front wall, with the exception of Warren Sapp, for being a part of that sack. Well, Robert Willis just held on to the ball too long here. You know, he had plenty of time to get rid of the football. He pump fakes once, pump fakes twice. Now he's got pressure. He's still pump faking, and wisely there, he puts the ball away and takes it down so he doesn't fumble, but, you know, he should have just gotten rid of the football. Loss on the play. The second sack of Higgins to this. No way. By the Canes is for seven yards. Here we see again, uh, Paul, there's just no way you can stand in the pocket and hold the football that long and expect not to get sacked. Terrell Willis inside the 40. It'll be third down. Burgess, the linebacker, again on the stop. So third and needing 16 yards with just over 10 minutes remaining. Low draw to Terrell Willis trying to take advantage of his running ability, but uh, James Burgess will have none of that as you see Patrick Raleigh coming in to clean up. The offensive coordinator, Stan Paris, having sent down the play. It will involve both Hutton and Harper to the far side, and the play clock is at six seconds. So the Knights are going to have to hustle here to get this one on. Higgins out of the backfield, Willis. Willis spins once. Down he goes again, but two on that. Made Burgess miss, but that allowed the rest of the defense to react. And it's fourth down. The third 16, you know, down by 14. You'd like to see him throw the ball downfield. And, you know, right now they're throwing strictly screens and flares. And it's just no way to pick up 16 yards without a lot of missed tackles or a great run by Willis, who does have the ability, but not against this Hurricane football team this afternoon. I do not recall one time in a long while, with the exception of the tight end Bataglia, that Rutgers has thrown down the middle of the field. Yeah, they're not throwing the ball down the field. And now there's fourth and fourth and long, and you're stuck with the same scenario, and here comes the blitz. Down the field to Bataglia, who fell down. Bataglia fell down, and trailing him was Thunderbird. He had him open, but I think Bataglia made the mistake of trying to stop. If he'd have kept running, he'd have ran right under the football. He tried to stop and go up and get it, instead of keeping his poise, continuing to run where he didn't have to jump. It was a good throw by Higgins, I felt. And Thunderbird saying, it's my fault. Well, on downs, Miami takes over. 9.15 away from the finish line, and the Canes own the scoreboard, leading by two touchdowns on the campus of Rutgers University. When tracking college football, keep your eye on the hurricane. The experts agree. Thompson newspapers say they're loaded with talent. Street and Smith's calls them a title contender. Miami should reassert its superiority this year. Hurricanes and Sunshine on track for another winning season.
It's been time again, and Don Shula is ready to take Miami into the highlight zone. So get ready, because Sunshine Network is going to take you along for the ride. I'm Carrie Ross. Join us next week when we take a look at that much-anticipated Shula versus Shula, David versus Don. We'll also look ahead to the Bills. All the best plays from the huddle to the hits. The game within the game. Brought to you live each week. The Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. 7 p.m. on Sunshine. Miami takes over Costa throwing on first down and he finds at midfield his tight end Sai Tucker and the junior comes up with the catch Tucker with his second grab of the afternoon once again uh, Frank Costa's confidence in Sai Tucker and he's putting it in amongst a lot of linebackers there and a lot of red shirts around the tight end but he's able to get it in Look at that time of possession. Miami holding on to the football in the third quarter. It's actually Tucker's third catch of the afternoon, and uh, for Costa, his 13th completion. He's now thrown for 239 yards. And more is Larry Jones. Carries it for a gain of four on the little swing pass, if not five. So Costa now closing in on 250 yards, throwing the football today. And Catano and Ward, linebacker and cornerback respectively, in on this stop. Just a little swing pass. This is what you call a safety valve pass. It gives you ball control, as you saw in the third quarter. Looking at those uh, stats there, Miami controlled the ball in the third quarter. They want to do the same thing in the fourth quarter. Control the football. German to the near side left. Yatiel Green to the top of your screen. And here comes Larry Jones around the right side with the first down and more inside the 35. And he steps out of bounds at the Rutgers 32-yard line. Good checkoff by Frank Costa. Effective at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, good checkoff to, to a solid running play where you've got the tight end out front. You've got... Uh, Ricky Perry, Tyrell Green, Tyrell Green, sorry, Casey Jones, Alan Simonette, Zell Blomelski. You know, now is when that big offensive line start to take effect. It should start to wear on that Rucker defense in the fourth quarter. A gain of 11 on that snap. 17-3 came. And on first down. Costa. Inside handoff. Much there this time for Larry Jones. And the defense just pushes him back. Rusty Schwartz, the linebacker, among others, are Sean Giddings and the interior. Now that's Scarlet Knight defense pushing back. This is the first of a three-game homestand here on campus. For Rutgers, they have Army next week to be followed by the Badgers of Cincinnati. And at the moment, their 12-game winning streak in this or on this campus, heading back the last couple of years, is in severe jeopardy. Coming with the blitz. Over the middle. Broken up. The pass ruled incomplete, intended for Jonathan Harris. And Mark Washington, the strong safety, stepped in there. Number 23 to break it up. They come with the blitz here, if you, as you see. 59 coming, Schwartz, and Costa does a good job of getting rid of it, but he threw right into coverage. He had a, a back flaring out of the backfield with no one covered him. If he'd have picked up Larry Jones, he might have had him off to the races. Triple receivers to the near side, and Trent Jones, Jamie German, and 85, Chris T. Jones. And the KC Jones to snap it. Jones is everywhere. Costa out of the gun, over the middle, broken up. Stop this hurricane offense. Really hurts when you've had a couple calls earlier today where Miami was real close, similar to this play here. But as you can see, Washington is all over his back. Spot foul. And that was a good call by the officials. Contact by Washington on the freshman and Jones prior to the arrival of the football. And it's first down Miami. Washington thought he had made the play. Instead, he had committed the 12th penalty of this football game. He tries to record. The Scarlet Knights walk up the blitz. Costa throws a play action. He has it complete, and Jonathan Harris fights his way into the end zone. Great tough running by a small man. The smallest guy on the field just carried three defenders to get into the end zone. Jonathan Harris, very determined running after the catch. He caught that ball about the 
the 10-yard line and fought his way all the way in for the score. Another look. There you, here you see him slip coming off the line of scrimmage, but Toretta, I mean, uh, Costa stays with him, and he just puts his head down and just runs through tacklers. You know, for a little guy, he's got to be super strong. Unfortunately for Rutgers, Mark Washington injured on the play, but this is Costa's second touchdown pass of the afternoon. This is just determination by Jonathan Harris that he wants to get an end zone. James Stewart will not get this touchdown, he says. For Harris, his second touchdown reception of the season for the fifth-year senior, and for Costa, a new single-season high, his eighth touchdown pass. And Harris to improve. It's a 23-3 football game. Mr. Capita, 24. The snap at Jeffrey Taylor. Out of Chrissy's hole. The extra point is perfect. And Miami's lead now. Three touchdowns. A solid 21. As number 21 in Pruitt nails the PAT. Miami well on its way to its first Big East victory of 1994. Nat said of the smallest man on the football field comes up with a 21 yard catch and touchdown in the last 10 he did on his own. What a tough little receiver. And Jonathan Harris. I'll tell you what, look at the zip on that ball by Frank Costa, but this is what really makes the play spectacular. To see this guy just run through tackles of bigger guys and carry them into the end zone. A lot of determination by a young man. Well, the sun is out. More to Miami's liking on this cool, damp afternoon. As the Kings have all but locked up what would be their third win of the year. Now, Terrell Willis dancing outside and finally taken down from behind across the 35-36 yard line. It appeared to be, let's see, from Aiden Mack. Maybe they've got a piece of it. Look at Costa's reaction. Yes, sir. His second touchdown strike of the afternoon. Well, that's a happy young man. He's, he's... You can talk about how long a week it's been for the Canes, but... Uh... Here's, here's, a, here's a good angle of showing the strength, the leg drive of Jonathan Harris as he just drags defenders into the end zone. Costa has heard the criticism and today playing well as Miami set to win Big East game number one. Willis out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Dennis Erickson had said the only way to erase the bitter disappointment of a week ago is to go out and win a football game. And that's what Miami apparently has done. They've done that and they've done it in fashion. They've, they've got uh, great balance in the run and, and, and the pass. And you, know, you got Ryan Collins, who uh, last year started this ball game uh, against Rutgers that uh, should be coming in. Uh, there you see his numbers for the year. And uh, you know, you've got a great one two punch with that. Uh, hurricane quarterback situation. Higgins gets it to Willis still again. And he has the first down out across the 46-47 yard line. Marvin Davis, the reserve left tackle, makes the stop. But as he does so, we'd like to take a moment to thank the director of athletics here at Rutgers, Fred Grudinger, for his hospitality. And the sports information director, Pete Kowalski, for all his assistance, as well as to John Hahn, the SID at the University of Miami, and to the athletic director, Paul D. at UN for all they've done to assist the Sunshine Network's telecast today of the Canes' first ever trip here to Rutgers. On first down, Higgins had time, and instead comes underneath for Battaglia, and it is broken up by Rohan Marley at midfield. Paul, the, the mark of a great football team is one that when they have problems, they go back to the drawing board and they make the corrections. Starting the ball game, they, they were tested with the screen pass. They were tested with the tight end. And as you can see, they have made the adjustments from last week to this week because they're coming up big against the tight ends. Battaglia is not having the great ball game that everyone expected of him coming into today's game. Rohan Marley was sitting there, had him covered like a blanket. He has caught five passes today, but he's uh, dropped or been unable to hang on to a like number. Tom Wright goes in motion. And uh, the Knights may have taken too much time. Play clock expired. 
ball to be of game offense. Here's Joe Rose down on the sidelines. Joseph? Paul, an interesting story took place before this game to motivate this Miami Hurricane football team. They talked about the fact that they greased the flags. They were so sure the goalposts in the back here, they were so sure they were going to win this football game. Well, the Hurricane football players heard this. It got them a little bit fired up, and that's what they've been laughing about. Let's keep the grease on the field goal post. <laughs> back to you guys. Yeah, what do we We say confidence bordering on arrogance in playing Miami. You, you don't want to do that, do you, Nat? No, you, you, you don't want to make a good football team mad, that's for sure. There it is again, same play. Thunderbird in the flat, close to midfield. I'm really surprised. They didn't take advantage of that earlier in the ball game because you know, that's, they're giving you five to six yards every time when they line up a guy out there in the slot. No one covers him. It's just a matter of a pitch and throw. You know, I mean, pitch and catch. And uh, you know, it's surprising that they're now starting to take advantage of it versus doing it earlier in the ball game. Third down and eight now, following the. Uh, Gain on the play of eight yards, uh, says our statistician, Joe Cabarra, who has provided all the numbers to us today. Higgins on the roll, running out of room. What a spin move. Still in bounds. Back he goes the other way. And now throws it to Taglia. But Taglia at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15 yard line and out of bounds. And there are no flags. What a play by Robert Higgins. You're talking about a spectacular play by the young quarterback showing a lot of poise, trapped on the sideline, pump faking, spinning out of it. And I think the Hurricanes actually gave up, thought he was going to step out of bounds here. They're in good position. They've got him covered. And look at this. Came close to stepping out of bounds, and then he finds Battaglia on the other side for a big play. Battaglia will take it 41 yards before Tawan Russell hops on his back. So it's first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Willis sweeping the left side. Willis close to the five-yard line. Malcolm Pearson up from the secondary. So in the waning moments of this game, Rutgers off the freak 41-yard pass and catch is threatening to post its first touchdown of the game. We've got four minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And a 24-3 Miami contest. But Rutgers has not been embarrassed here this afternoon. No, they've not. They've played well. They just uh, have hurt themselves with critical penalties, you know, at inopportune times to stop them, stop their drives. Higgins rolls, fires, and a Harper could not make the grab. Higgins to Harper. Twice today, a young Stephen Harper perhaps has heard footsteps. Well, I don't, I don't know whether he heard footsteps there. I think the ball was a little bit behind him. It was a catchable ball, but it was a little bit behind him where he had to spin back and make the catch. But this is a catch that he had to make to be a star receiver in the Big East. Here you see the roll as Higgins comes out. Ball's just slightly behind him. It goes as an incompleted pass, third down, and one. Again, Willis set behind with right leading interference. And Willis, here come those white jerseys. He puts it on the ground, but Miami cannot make the recovery before the ball bounds across the sideline. It's fourth down. Boy, Miami came charging. Twan Russell, James Burgess, that linebacking core was all over Willis. Well, you, you hit him earlier down here with that play, and there's just no way they were going to let you run that play again with great su success. As you see the linebacker core filling outside, stripping him of the football. Willis today is going to be tired when this game is over. He's carried the ball 15 times against Miami for 58 yards. Lost three there. Presley has carried 10 times today and gained 41 yards. So close to 100 yards combined from thunder and lightning today. And it's Presley on fourth and four. The lone setback. Play action to him. Thunderbird. His knee touched. Again, his knee touched at the 12-yard line. He's down there, and Miami will take over on down. Pass was low. Low throw by Higgins, but you know, Thunderbird 
Burke has got to be able to squat and catch that ball without putting his knee down. You know, uh, especially on fourth down where you need a first down and you know that you don't have enough yardage. So as knee marks the spot in which Miami will now own possession of this football game and the stadium begins to empty. This record crowd of close to 40,000. The largest gathering ever in the illustrious 125 year history of Scarlet Knight football. A pause in the action back for the final 407 of this first Big East Conference meeting of the season for Miami with any fall. And for Rutgers staring squarely at its third loss of the year. Today's Florida State football game has been brought to you by your local Florida Jeep and Eagle dealers. By Coors Light. Reach for Coors Light, the silver bullet, and keep on moving. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When you're thirsty, it's got to be Gatorade. I'm Kyle Petty. Hey, with Kindle Oil, you don't need a race car to win. Just enter Kindle's fall sweepstakes. You could drive off in this loaded Pontiac Grand Prix or win a Kindle racing jacket or cap. And that's not all. You can get double mail-in rebates on Kindle Superb 100 and GT1. That's up to eight bucks off two cases of Kindle. Heck, with a sweepstakes and double rebate, you can drive the speed limit and still win. Kindle Motor Oil. Hey, man, buy it at these locations. you're active, your body heat increases 15 or 20 times. You become dehydrated. As soon as 30 minutes, you lose fluid. Up to two quarts of sweat per hour. But more than anything else, you get thirsty. 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 Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Drink it. No other beverage enters the bloodstream faster and rehydrates you better. Chug it. Nothing quenches a deep down body thirst better. Scientifically tested, athletically proven. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's gotta be Gatorade. Elvira here, finding great horror movies for the Coors Light Flicker Treat Giveaway. Coors! Huh? We're giving away 50,000 videos, like the giant Gila monster, the wasp woman, or the brain that wouldn't die. Don't just stand there. Look for me this Halloween in a shocking display of specially marked Coors packages with film clips inside to tell you if you won. The Coors Light Flicker Treat Giveaway. It'll be a scream. <laughs> A new quarterback in, Ryan Collins is in to take some snaps, and he lost his mouthpiece there. And here's Larry Jones fighting his way outside. You see, Ryan Collins started to bark out the snap count, and that gold mouthpiece came flying out. <laughs> well, he's just excited that uh, he's finally gotten into the ball game. You know, you play a team that you played well against last year. You had a big ball game the way he did. Uh, you know, he was hoping to get in this game a lot earlier. He thought that his Hurricanes would go out and blow him out, and he would get in a lot sooner. Last season, uh, Nat Uriarty passed for close to 300 yards in the win over Rutgers. The first ever meeting between these two schools, a 291 officially and a couple of touchdowns. Danielle Ferguson. Wide to the near side left, out of your screen. And the Canes will keep it on the ground and uh, get that clock working with 355 remaining and counting. So for Miami, uh, their opponent next week in the Seminoles have had a week off. They had this weekend off. Uh, that has to work, you would think, in their advantage, wouldn't you, Nat? Well, it, it can work for you because it, it, it ha you have the opportunity to get everybody healthy, and you have a chance to prepare for your opponent. But where it hurts you is you've got an opportunity to get rusty because practice just does not measure up to game-type experience that uh, they'll be missing this weekend. 356 wins now for Erickson. Collins is going to scramble. And taken down near the first down marker out across the 21-yard line. Collins can run. Mike Bressel, reserve inside linebacker, seeing late game duty today. As there'll be some happy faces on the charter headed home, and, and I do believe for Rutgers, quite honestly, a foundation on which to build. Yeah, they, ha they have nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, as we've harped on all ball game, it's it's the penalties that have hurt them more than the Hurricanes. You know, they were in the ball game, had plenty of opportunities to score points, but they would come up with a senseless mistake or turnover here and there. But, uh, you know, just something to go back, correct, they're going to get better. Off 
off the side of Chrissy's foot, and now it takes a hurricane roll nearing midfield. And it rolls dead at the Miami 48-yard line. Paul, well, looking at the way the punters have uh, performed today, you have to feel the wet feel has really hurt their ability to step up and kick the football. You know, you've had both punters that the ball has gone off the side of their foot, and they just haven't been able to get square footing where they could launch a good punt today. So for Dennis Erickson, he'll be uh, much more gregarious, I'm sure, after this game than he was before. He knew he had his work cut out. And the upcoming schedule of Virginia Tech ranked 10th in the nation, headed toward a, an important Big East date with Syracuse this afternoon. So it's Tech and Syracuse following the Knolls and the Mountaineers for Erickson and company. For Rutgers on first down, toting the ball for the first time today, David Hamlin, a redshirt freshman running back. Carries it for the first time. Eight on the play of close to six. Former Fork Union Academy. Prepster, it's Army next week in Cincinnati here, and then up to Boston College to face Dan Henning. Temple back here, and then the Hokies and Johnny Majors, the Panthers. Another flag, another procedure call. You're grimaced, Matt. Well, you know, as a player, a former player, I know how much this hurts an offense when you can't get off on the snap count and you continually Good just ball, make senseless illegal mistakes. Snap, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Now, these are usually mistakes that you have earlier in the year, not going into your fifth ball game. Uh, usually, uh, starting the season, you'll have the illegal procedures, the offside penalties, but in the fifth ball game, you, sh you should have these things corrected. Penalty number 14, 120 yards the wrong way for the Scarlet Knights. Second and 10, the pass nearly picked up. Miami nearly had the INT Tremaine Mack breaking on the football. The pass intended for Charles Woolridge. It's overthrown. Right, the redshirt freshman Mack came ever so close to the pickoff. Well, Miami's got wholesale changes now. They've got the entire second team in there, and you know this is what you live for when you're a second teamer or redshirt guy or practice squad guys. The opportunity to get in and play, and you know they're getting their opportunity here in the last uh, minute and 28 seconds. So the second unit D to wrap this thing up. And again, keeping it on the ground, the Scarlet Knights have the first down as David Hamlin carries inside the 40 and down to the 37-yard line. First down, Knights. Now the uh, remaining Miami defenders, in fact, the whole team on the far sideline is telling that backup defensive unit, don't let these guys into the end zone. We held them without a TD, and we want that to stand with 115 remaining in count. There was a touchdown combination today. Costa firing as he did to Trent Jones. Talking to Harris as well. A slip. His knee did not touch. Nice pass into the end zone. Too far. Some bumping, but no flag. For a guy that was stumbling about, Higgins had quite a bit of muscle on that pass. He showed, to me, Higgins shows a lot of poise for a guy that hasn't played much. Uh, he did panic on the big play when he was able to spin out and hit uh, Marco Pataglia there. He lost his footing. He put his hand down, caught his balance, and was, still had presence, presence downfield to pick out a receiver and air it out. You know, a lot of poise for a young guy that hasn't played a lot. 51 seconds remaining. As the Knights are back up to the line of scrimmage, air receivers to the near side and Hutton and Harper. And the inside give. A very busy Damon Hamlin here in the late stages of this football game. Keeping it on the ground, and the crowd wants Rutgers to hustle up and try to punch something into the end zone. With every snap here, Rutgers is using this primarily as a scrimmage to get better, get some experience running the two-minute drill. As the clock continues to wind, 25 seconds and counting. 
Robert Higgins back to throw. A flag goes down, and he throws it near no one in red. Stephen Harper cut across the middle. Higgins may have thought he was going to break for the corner. Well, he had to get rid of the ball and uh, anticipate where his receiver was going because Dwayne Johnson came in and really put a Legal hit on procedure. him. Offense. Just as he was releasing the football. have to believe this comes close to being an all-time record for penalties for Rutgers in a single game. The legal procedure, offense, penalty has been declined. It is fourth down. Warren Sapp, what a huge first half he had, and perhaps the pivotal play of the game, scooping up the fumble by Willis and rambling a dozen yards. It's a big play. Rutgers had the football, had a chance to go in and score before the end of the half. And Sapp comes up with the fumble and puts Miami in great field position. They're able to go in and score. On fourth down, Higgins unloads across the middle, and it's incomplete. Behind Jonathan Gibbs, the junior, the intended receiver at the 18-yard line, and Miami once again takes over on downs, having but to uh, run one play in this game's history. For Miami, in the two meetings with Rutgers, last year in this, the Canes a perfect 2-0. And, oh. and having won now 13 of their last 14 games, 13 of 14 overall in the Big East Conference. And next week, uh, the State of Florida Championship comes into play. State of Florida Championship? What about that other school up there in Gainesville? Well, yes. Mr. Blue and Orange, I thought you might bring that up. Boy, what a team they have. They've got a good football team this year, but uh, you know, the state of Florida, University of Miami, Florida State, and Florida has year in and year out put good football teams on the field. Well, the gun, as you hear, actually a cannon at Rutgers has been fired. This one belongs to Miami. Dennis Erickson has bounced back into the victory column as the Canes have rec recorded a 24-3 triumph in their first ever journey on to the banks in the Rutgers campus to conquer the Scarlet Knights. In this, the 125th anniversary game celebrating the anniversary of the founding of college football. It was Rutgers handing Princeton a 6-4 to four setback 125 seasons ago. Today, a century and a quarter later, it's Miami in this brand new stadium winning by three touchdowns, Nat. Impressively, although it seemed they had to fight in each and every quarter. And uh, standing by with the head coach of the Canes, here's Joe. Thanks, Paul. First of all, Coach, congratulations on the win. It's got to be nice to bounce back from last week. Well, it is, and I'll tell you what, they're, they're a good football team. They played very well in the first half, played with tremendous emotion, as you can see here with this crowd, and uh, uh, we came out, and, uh, you know, we played uh, very well on defense in the second half. I wasn't ha happy with where we're at offensively, but, Joe, we got a long ways to go to you know, play that opponent we're playing next week, which is, a, which is a key for us. So hopefully we can see what we did wrong and improve and uh, get ready for that big one next week. At 14 14-3 at halftime. Any deja vu from last week at all? And what do you tell your team at halftime? Just we reminded them of last week, and uh, I was disappointed that we didn't come out and play better in the, at the start of the second half on offense, where we had an opportunity to get some first downs and and didn't do it. But uh, we won the football game, played well on defense, and, and I thought uh, in a lot of areas we throw, showed a lot of character. But you know, Rutgers coming up here is a, was not the easiest thing in the world, to be very honest with you. It's got to be tough going between Washington, that tough loss this week, and then of course what's coming now, Florida State University. Well, this is. A big one and we obviously know that they're a great football team and uh, you know our guys have got to rise to the occasion have a good week of practice and we'll see what happens but uh, i'm excited about it and excited about that game all right dennis thank you okay joe thank you all right that's dennis erickson and we'll throw it back up to the boys thank you very much big dog absolutely you do not beat dennis erickson on back-to-back -back weekends and today miami 24 to 3 has a victory in the big east conference and it's third of the season, waxing Rutgers by three touchdowns. It's a successful journey this afternoon for Miami in its first trip ever into Rutgers Stadium 
as the Canes conquer the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers of 24 to 3. But I think the score is somewhat misleading. And Dennis Erickson said so as well as it really begins to rain uh, quite hard here in Rutgers Stadium that uh, the Scarlet Knight team played about as well as it could at times to hang tough with Miami. Well, they played exceptionally well. They lost their star player in Ray Lucas, but defensively, they hung in there until the bitter end when Miami was able to finally put a third touchdown on the scoreboard. But uh, they've got a lot to build on, and they've got to correct some mistakes. The biggest problem they have, uh, as I saw today, was the the um, penalties and a few turnovers. If they can correct these senseless penalties, they're going to be in every ball game. And hand it to Dennis Erickson and his staff and this team as well that uh, following the disappointment of the Washington setback and with the Seminoles on the horizon, they're still able to win a Big East Conference game on the road. And here statistically, that is how they got it done. Well, they did a good job of uh, running with the football. They showed a lot of balance as they had 409 yards total offense. Two turnovers. They cannot have that against Florida State. But the big thing was, in the third quarter, they assumed control of the game. They took control. They controlled the football and was able to gain some time on who was controlling the football this ball game. And Frank Costa with a pair of touchdown passes in this game. One to Chris T. Jones and the other to Jonathan Harris. It's Miami 24-3. And in a moment, final thoughts from a rather waterlogged Joe Rose down on the sidelines when we return to Rutgers here on Sunshine Network. Miami now picks up a win in its very first Big East Conference game of the year. Let the slate show that Miami is 3-1 and one on the season. Rutgers falls below the break-even mark at 2-3 uh, and three and 1-2 and two in the Big East, but uh, they could be a factor down the road. Well, they, they, they've got a good football team, and they're going to surprise a lot of people. they still got Virginia Tech coming in here. Syracuse uh, beat them earlier, but... You know, when you when you got something to build on, you got a young quarterback today that got some playing time. When Lucas got hurt, that's only going to help him. Let's check in with final thoughts. Once again, down on the sidelines, here's Joe Rose. Paul, I thought in the first quarter, Rutgers really came out with a very emotional first quarter and really controlled things for the most part. They're able to score points, take an early lead in this game. The second quarter, Warren Sapp really took over, and I thought he set the tone not only on the football field, but on the sideline, getting his guys going. I was glad to see before the half was over, Coach McMacken, defensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes, said, hey, guys, second half. Remember last week, 14-3. to Let's come out and control things in the second half and not put pressure on our offense. And they did just that. Offensively, though, they're going to have to play better. They're going to beat FSU next week. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. And uh, as we invite you to stick around, uh, Monday night, Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine will unfold at 7 o'clock as the Dolphins will be uh, discussing their trip to Cincinnati, the meeting of the two Shulas, Don and David, on Sunday. And then the uh, round mound of rebound, Charles Barkley and his Celebrity Golf Invitational. That's Monday, too, right here on Sunshine Network. And Nat enjoyed it. It's, it was fun. But the record show defensively, Ray Lewis today did it again. Another double-digit performance. 12 tackles by the Canes inside linebacker. Had a big day, and Miami rolled for this 24-3 win. For Nat, for Joe, for our entire team, including John Lou, our producer, I'm Paul Kennedy. And we look forward to seeing you soon here on Sunshine.